We'll start the meeting at 9.10am. Thank you for your attendance, councillors. Um, firstly, um, on behalf of council, I would uh, like to pay our respects to the fallen uh, police officers um, with the terrible tragedy that happened uh, not, you know, not too distant from our area uh, and pay the respects to the families and also, um, also pay the respects to the tragedy of the innocent citizen that was uh, killed at the same time as the two police officers. And on behalf of council and the people of the Maranoa, um, it's just such a, a, a terrible tragedy and um, we pass on our condolences to the families involved and everyone involved in the greater um, police community um, and um, may this never happen again. And on that notice, we'll just ask councillors to stand for a minute, minute silence. <coughs> Thank you, councillors. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, do we have anyone to confirm the uh, confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary meeting on the 23rd of November 2022? Mr Mayor, could I just say that I'm online? Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, councillor Taylor's online and councillor Edwards will be joining us um, um, later. Okay, do we have anyone confirmation of the minutes? Uh, Councillor Burkett. Uh, I'd like to move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 23rd of November 2022 be confirmed. We have a seconder, Councillor O'Neill. Um, all those uh, in... Excuse me, Mr Mayor. Sorry yep. to interrupt. Sure. Just, something's just jumped out at me at the minutes. So I just wanted to clarify. Sure. Page 18 of the minutes. It just says, point five added following a suggestion from the Mayor and further discussions, but there actually is no point five. I'm sorry, I was just flicking the page and it just jumped out at me. Kel, do you know what that one was about? Page uh, country eight. universities. It was a country university. It's just that it says point. Then we might, can we lay this on the table too? Yeah, what, Mr it's Mayor, it's because there's two threes. Oh, perfect. Thank so you. It's one, two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, I didn't pick up. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, good, morning, good morning, Mark. Good morning, Councillor Edwards. Good morning, Councillor Edwards. Jo joining the meeting. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. We have Councillor Edwards online. So okay. Move that without okay. Amend, no, <clears throat> yeah, okay. So does the mover um, happy with that? Yes. In the numbers, so it's four and five. Um, and is the second happy with that? Okay, so we're going to go to the vote. Uh, this is uh, for um, Councillor Edwards. This is the ordinary meeting of the 21st of November. Yes. And on on uh, the minutes, <laughs> and it was on page, what page was it? 18. 18. Mm. The numbers yep. are wrong, so it says one to four, but there's two threes, I think. So it, it should be one yeah. to five. Um, so, yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, so that's what the amendment is, that we're going to change the numbers to be one to five, not one, uh, two and two threes and a four. 
Um, so we're going to the vote on those uh, minutes. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, nine zero. Okay, do we have anyone to move on the um, uh, the confirmation of the minutes of the thirtieth November? Um, Councillor McMullen. Mr. Mayor, I'll move that the minutes of the special meeting held on the thirtieth of November, twenty twenty two, be confirmed. Do we have a seconder, Councillor Guthrie? Any opposition? Uh, excuse anyone... me, uh, Mayor. Yes, uh, Mayor, Mayor Galdi, I might have to abstain on that one. I think. Um, what, you know, when the vote comes, I'm pretty sure it wasn't there for the whole That's thing. He's recorded in the Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, so um, Councillor... I thought I might have left the meeting during, okay. during the course of the, you the uh, meeting. The, you were there for the vote, Councillor Edwards. And it says it in 10. Oh, I was. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry. I think you got the wrong one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, wrong, wrong meeting. Okay. Thank you. No worries. So we have a mover in. We had a seconder. Um, and uh, no, no one wishes to speak. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Nine zero. Okay. Now, right. I'm moving on to um, page forty-five. Forty-five. Eight point one. Char uh, charity cattle drive. Twenty twenty-three. I'd like to move that Council uh, provide in principle support for the inaugural 2023 ca uh, charity cattle drive um, and um, invite the organisers to a briefing uh, when, it is, um, when it is appropriate in their planning and they have made decisions to do the event. Made a decision to do the event. We have a second, Councillor Ladbrook. I've got a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Does that mean that the event is not confirmed yet? It may not No, go it's ahead. not confirmed yet, no. But you've got a, the chicken and the egg, so this is giving in principle support from Council, which would be one of the places they will stop. And, um, and then they can come once they've confirmed that they're definitely doing it and away they go. And we'll get a briefing and councillors can ask all their questions. Yep. Um, this will probably be something that they'll ask, uh, that I can ask on the day, but um, have they indicated at what time of the year that they, is it in the last six months, the first six months? Or yes. How quickly do we get them in for a briefing to have? April, October. I say there. Mm. Yeah, it's April 12th, oh, sorry. It would be the tail end of it at this end, or not the tail yeah. end, but towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Um, then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay, 9 0. Page 59. Uh, item 8.2, um, Calico Cottage Historical Precinct Project. I'd like to move that um, Council, one, note the current estimates for the Calico Cottage Historical Precincts Project exceed the current available funding for the budget. Two, expedite the project by inviting expressions of interest, EOIs, to builders, including local builders. Um, with the capability to deliver a design and construct project. Three, uh, resolve in accordance of section 230 of the Local Government Regulation 2012 to prepare a tender consideration plan for the Calico Cottage Historical Precinct Project. Four, prepare and release to the market expressions of interest, EOI documentation to include a required um, uh, documentations to include are required to a, a high level price estimate for the current project as designed as well as a proposal from the builder on what they could deliver for the current approved project budget but also based on key concepts of the original design and five seek a tender award uh, seek 
a tender award, seek to award a tender maybe, would it be? Or, um, yeah, actually, uh, seek to award a tender in early 2023 with the view to construct the Wallambella Heritage Precinct Calico Cottage project in 2023 for the current approved project budget. Uh, Councillor McMullen. I've got a couple of questions. Um, this has already been, I, I can't understand this because this was originally designed to be done in sections. Yeah. Because, and we, that was the plans that went, you know, went through a whole process and modular set up. So if we didn't get the, get the funding in stages, so. Um, so this is, um, this is a situation where we go out to, um, for a high level estimate, so we're not wasting um, a lot of time and it's actually about delivering the project uh, quicker and also um, based on the same concept, um, as you know, builders can say, well, mate, we can do it the way that you've actually designed it and it'll cost this, but we can do it with a very similar uh, look and it will cost that. So this is actually about getting um, the knowledge of local builders. So it's a two-part process, which is getting a high level estimate from the builders. Um, at the moment, as you know, we haven't even been able to get builders to uh, tender on uh, things. And the cost of a project um, um, therefore uh, blows out. So this is actually about getting more people involved in the process, but high level estimate, and those high level estimates come back to council. And this project is now, um, we've been waiting for funding, we've been told that uh, prices have been uh, ballooning. Um, this is about getting uh, high level estimates is the big change to this and getting that back to council. If that doesn't work, then we will get that back and find that it doesn't. But if it does, um, one of the things that I'm concerned is that council is not a good customer of uh, local businesses, of builders, because they're so busy, so they don't even uh, tender on our projects. So this is a way, and it's um, up to the council, and that's why it says A, provide a high level estimate for the current project, which is exactly as it has been designed, but also B, a proposal for the builder that could deliver the current approved project budget based on the key concepts. And when you talk to builders, they will always find different ways of being able to do things that look the same from the outside, but it could make a major difference. So uh, that's a high level estimate. That's not a lot of time. The feedback I get is that they don't want to go into lengthy tenders um, rather than uh, don't want to spend a lot of time. And I think uh, we're in um, quite a, you know, we, we caught, like we've also already asked for um, in this project extensions, and this is a way to actually enhance using uh, builders to give us um, basically a different way of getting more um, availability of uh, local builders to also provide estimates and we can come back and then um, give a tender out on that basis and then they can firm up to their uh, detailed price before anything would actually happen. So this is actually about getting the builders <clears throat> involved in a process that is more like um, what you would do out in the market. Yeah. Mr Mayor, I'm more than happy for the local builders but I think we should be going out to tender with what we've got in place mm -hmm. in the well, modular kit. Mod, not a modular kit, but in the modular. The last time we had one one tender. Um, we, have, we've, we haven't gone out yet. No, but on the last project we had one tender. The, the, <coughs> the situation does not work in my view. Councillor O'Neill. Um, are you allowing just a discussion, or are you going to seek a, a seconder to debate, or are we just have oh, Well, we're that? doing questions at the moment. But do you, yes. have any, do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah, I've got comments and questions. Well, can we do questions first? Well, well, no, it'll be more, as I said, it's a comment and a question. Um, so I don't know how well, you want to do it. Okay, that. well, let's try it and see if it is. So um, I, I get what you're trying to do. Um, so in principle, I, I think that it has merit. I just wonder, how do we embed in this <clears throat> that uh, the community has had extensive consultation on the design that they want, and if we simply go out to 
a design and construct uh, type scenario, they may not get what they want and therefore we have not taken the community on the journey. Because at the end of the day, this is the Wallambilla community's asset. It's their drive, they want it. They've, they've been the ones that have um, put the time and energy into the many hours of consultation down there. And when I read this, whilst it may not be your intent, it, it certainly comes across that that can be thrown to the side and we can start again. Where one, we shouldn't, if that's not the case, we shouldn't be um, uh, taking uh, builders down that line of thought to come back to us. Maybe if we say this is the concept that we want, we've got the concept, right? How can you make it work? Come, come back to us with s suggestions. And to Councillor McMullen's point, I mean, the extra money that we've just uh, negotiated from the APLNG for this, it was on the basis that this is modular and we would do as much as we can with X and then we would go and get more money when we can, whether it's through grants or rates or whatever it is, to be able to continue it. So we probably need, if this, does, if this gets up today, well, we probably shouldn't go down this path without understanding whether that fits in with um, you know, the broader support of what we discussed with APLNG the other day would be my thinking. But I, I get what you're trying to do. Um, mm. And I support, we, we want this done, the community want it done, but how do we embed in it that we're not walking away from what they've come up with? Well, I got advice from the CEO on this as far as um, doing this uh, report up and I believe the Deputy Director was involved in this um, wording. So I believe um, when you look at point two, but also based on key concepts of the original design, it's not a going away from the original design, but if you can have sheets that if you use this... Say that, sorry, just so we don't get too far away from that point, B, point two. A proposal from the builder on what they could deliver for the current approved project budget, but also based on key concepts of the original design. So how about get rid of but based? Don't say also, because then we are walking away from the, the um, you know input of the community, which That's what I was trying to get <coughs> does, does concern me when I read it. Well, um, Councillor Guthrie. My question is, is it appropriate to put in bold things like the current project as designed so it's really yeah. visually mm. hitting you in the face that it's not moving mm. away from, it's actually the current... So in each one of those is mention of the current project as designed for the current approved project. So it's very clear that there's actually a very uh, clear set of parameters for the project. And would tighten words, like removing also, yep. but say, but based on, you're yeah. giving a direction to the people you want to get the concept We back. don't need but also, it could just be based on key concepts. Oh, yeah, based, yeah. based on the key concepts. Don't give an e either or. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I, I was going to ask for some amendments, but um, we need to somehow, as everyone, says, oh, well, not other people are suggesting, get the um, emphasis out on the current design. We don't want to be changing the design and not ask the builders to do a design of their own when we don't want a design of their own. I think that A is right, like as design, but yeah, I agree with Councillor Guthrie. If you have that really set out, yeah, I think B does contradict it in a little way. I so really it's based on um, the key concepts of it. So if it looks the same, but builders do things different ways that look the same. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Yeah. But the way that reads, it's as if they could come up with something entirely yeah. different to yeah. what the has been wants. consulted with the community. Mr Mayor, can I just suggest that we follow on from Councillor McMullen's suggestion and say, um, as originally envisaged as a module staged approach or something, so it's actually then very clear that it's capturing the discussions from well down the track previously, that it can be staged based on the current project as designed. Based on key concepts yeah. of the original design. All the design and original that modular design, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what based on key well, concepts of the original. They'd have to refer to anyway. That, that builders would go back to that original document anyway. You'd yeah, but that's the trouble. Sometimes we have done it so expensively in our design that you want an expensive um, thing, you will get one. Councillor Guthrie. Mr Mayor, can I suggest we lay this one on the table because I think that it is, there's a lot of really good discussion that's happening here. If we could tweak the wording a little bit and present it later in the day. I Why think can't we do that now? Look, it's it's open it? and it's... Well, yeah. 
I'm just mm. mindful of time. It's a very yeah, yeah, but it's, it, I think that's an important conversation for the community okay. to see. Very important that the design and the layout's exactly the same as it was. Um, just approved, well, I'm saying approved with the community. Excuse, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me, Chair. Um, yeah, I'll have to leave the meeting, I'm sorry. Um, I'll right be back then. later. Okay, thank you. Bye. Um, so, a proposal from building what they could deliver for the current approved budget. Based, based on based on key concepts of the original design. Yeah, or you so, could say key concepts of the original modular design if you want to make council. sure it's modular to council. Um, we sort of because then they might very go, very confident. We're only probably got about a third to half of the money we want. Mm, and that was the whole idea. They're going to build the floor and the roof and, and yeah. start. Yeah, no, but, that, but that's because I believe our and we, there's history that our. We are so de detached from the current building market and it's been proven by the amount of tenders we get and people that want to do tenders. When you have one tender in a process, you need to change the process. So instead of paying um, for that, like this is a way to go and talk to people and get a high level estimate, get it back to council where they don't even engage in the process now. Maybe they won't, maybe they will. So. I'm happy to have in there, based on the original um, key concepts, the idea is they might build the same thing that looks the same, but they do it a different way and it's saved half the cost. So key concepts of the original design, though, you'd leave yeah, the original yeah. design. And, and the thing is, um, I think we, we have been affected by seeing what um, council uh, can't do and then we look at people outside this chamber and they're actually doing things that are far more cost effective. So this is a chance to try it. Yeah. And what have we got to lose? I don't think we've got anything to lose and everything to gain. Another question while we're on the go, probably for the CEO, I can't remember. Well, we've got to move this house too, haven't we? Yeah. Just, um, we've got to move uh, the house before was, um, we do that, too, before we start this. Uh, through the Chair, um, you probably need a seconder um, to to oh, continue the debate. Um, okay, so we have a second and I'm happy to change it as um, they could deliver the current project budget based on key concepts of the original design. Um, righto, I'll speak to the motion. Uh, you can just ask a question, CEO. Mr. Councillor the chair, it's not germane to the report. Thank you. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we've got the, the Mayor moving a motion on the floor in relation to this report. Um, and discussing the motion. May I move we lay this on the table till next year and then we'll do a workshop on it. Um, all those in favour? I just got a question, but with that... I well, we'll just do the vote. Okay. All those yep. against? Oh, sorry, well, we can... I didn't oh. vote because I was waiting on the answer. Please go ahead. All those in favour? Blame on the table. Yep. Yes. All those against? Uh, carried um, five three if I can call for a division. So now can I have an answer to my question, good? Mr. May? What was the well, question? Not, well, it was it's not in this table. motion, but I oh, know, but I tried to ask it beforehand, and Mr. Yeah, May said we're going to do this. Sorry, no, we're doing. Hang on, who's both. chairing the meeting? Well, well, Mayor is. Well, yeah, well, and so no, you cannot ask your question. That that is gone. Please put it as an S one seventy and ask the question. But we have made a decision to lay it on the table. We need to now move on to the next motion. OK, I'll remember that for future when we lay things on the table. Item 11.1, .1, Plant Replacement um, Program, Greater Fleet. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yeah, hey, we haven't got a move in a second yet. What for? We're going to do that before we start asking questions. No. Well, I would just chip before because we didn't have a seconder. No, no, not for asking a question. I don't remember I've ever done that for not asking. I didn't chip you. No, no, not no, you. I'm just saying. Oh, I, was, be, I was just be, asking. Yeah, no, you're no, get a second. Just, we hadn't a second. I was reminded. Oh, it wasn't me. All right. No, no, I was definitely asking. Was it a question? Because I do think that there's questions. But when you do lay things on the table, sometimes people don't get an opportunity to say that. Um, can we, I we, ask? Can we? Can I just say when we lay things on the table, Mr. Mayor? Historically, in this chamber, you have allowed other people then to ask their questions because that information That's can right. come back by the staff 
for um, when it's represented in the new year. So what happened before is not what has happened historically <coughs> in this council chamber. This, and, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Chair, but I'm asking for, I ask for a briefing before it comes back to council. But then other councillors may have questions pertinent to laying it on the table. I don't know what councillor Hancock was going to ask, but that is historically what has been allowed in this council chamber. But before I understood, and I didn't really understand the uh, that was a question being asked. I thought uh, Councillor Hancock wanted to know, and I said we're in the middle of a vote. We voted one part of it. We need to finish the vote. So if, um, yeah, maybe. You were very strong, the strongest I've seen you in a long time, by denying the councillor to ask her question. But through the chair, you just, um, it is the standing orders. So um, for, for clarity is that once the matter has been laid on the table, it is laid on the table. And again, you, the chair has given you an opportunity to ask the question in another format. Okay, so just with this report, there is one question I had about um, on page 73, Uh, the operator is requesting a Cat M for replacement to match the power of the John Deere. Um, is that in the recommendation or is that something separate? No, we haven't even gone to build the specification yet, Mr. Mayor. Right. The, the whole this was a report um, raised on uh, because it was requested through council. Yep. Um, what we do now is if we get to go ahead to do it and replace these, which we've been trying to do for the last couple of years. Yep. is we'll go out to the operators, get what they require, go to their team leaders, go to their managers if they have them, or their local area director, build the specification. That gets approved then by the, the team again. And then we go out, get the quotes, and when it all comes back, then we sit down and crunch the numbers. Right. So that feedback that you've got in the greater operator assessment feedback form will be taken into consideration when yeah. you're building the, yeah. the spec and all of that. Yeah. Righto. Okay. I'm, Councillor I'm Burkett, happy to move it. Please go ahead. Uh, I'd like to move that Council 1 receive and note the report. 2 replace plant number 2002, 2003, 2004, 2018 budgeted for in the financial year 21-22 financial year. Being Caterpillar 12M, Caterpillar 12M, Caterpillar 12M, John Deere 770 GP respectively. And plant number 2020 budgeted in the financial year 2023. 223 being Caterpillar 140M for a total estimate at for a total estimate at 2,000 2,500,000 from the plant reserve GL6551, noting that proceeds of approximately 750,000 are expected. Replace plant number 2001 not budgeted being a Caterpillar 12M grader for an estimated 500,000 if sufficient funds in the plant reserve GL6551 are available, noting that the proceeds of approximately 150,000 is expected. Three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to commence the replacement process for the previous approved grade as plant number 2002, 2003, 2004, 2018, 2020 and grade of plant number 2001 accordingly. Uh, Councillor O'Neill, do you have a question? I just got a couple of questions. I put in an S170A yesterday, which I, I know um, it hasn't been responded to. So I, I just wonder, um, going forward, uh, take this offline, when we've got a question about the um, re agenda that's a day before right, the meeting, do I, the rules are we just put S170A and we can't add yourself, Edwina, based on the advice we got from the department the other day. So. That, How do um, we... That's you, not... Section 170A isn't the only way. Section 170A is designed for a councillor to obtain information that's important for them to do their role, right? You've got a 10-day standard on that yeah, Section yeah, yeah, 170, no, no, no. so you've got some timing issues. There's nothing stopping you as a councillor actually sending that question directly to me. Is that right? Yeah. Is that OK, though? Yes, <laughs> yeah, certainly you happy to do that. Do you add 170A in as well? Because that is yeah, the only... Yeah, but certainly by all means, if you think that... Um, you need that in that format. If it's just information around the agenda or asking a question yep. that could be provided to you ahead of the agenda, uh, more than happy to have that directly. Because that's what I've done in the past and then we got that yep. advice the other day that we yep. can only put one 
yeah. S1 to me, which yeah, I yeah. And through the chair, can, it's, yeah. it's problematic because I've seen some of those questions in the last couple of meetings come through and you think, well, theoretically, that standard doesn't actually meet the need of the customer, no, the, no. the councillor, yeah. to get that information quickly. All right, so I'll do that yep. in, in, sure. in future. I'll CC you in. Yep. My, I, um, it's half been answered what I asked, but I said, could I please have the replacement value of the plant items 202, 203, 204 in 2018? That's obviously um, my failure not reading the resolution before I read the report, but that's um, through the chair, that's 2,500,000 is, uh, is, is that right? Is that the- for five, for five machines. At this stage, it's on a, pretty much on a like for like, but if they decide they want different 3D machine control or they want something else, then there can be some variation. So that's the oh the four at the top plus the Caterpillar 140M is a total estimated value of 2.5 million, Correct. and then it says in the report uh, the author was only recently advised by the program funding and budget coordinator that the approved funding for plan items that I just listed was not carried over in 22-23. I asked in the S178, can you remember why it wasn't carried over if they needed to be replaced? They. Um the budget this year was somewhat different to the previous years. Normally we did a big report, and you would have recorded it. We even used to put photos in of machines. Yeah. This year we were just asked to fill in a spreadsheet for the uh, for the stuff that was due for replacement this financial year. And that was the last we saw of it. Okay, so ch yeah. changing process. And yeah. so they were just then in, in that process, <laughs> a decision was made not to put them forward by, by, into the budget. Yeah, by, by as part of the budget um, process. Just, and now, so, sorry, through the chair, but is that the reason we didn't purchase them last year? Is no, that no, what no. The, the reason we didn't purchase them originally, um, originally the manager of construction at the time, because these were all, were all construction graders, because yeah. uh, the restructure was coming, he placed them on hold because he wasn't sure if they were going to need construction graders going forward or more maintenance graders <coughs> going forward. So on his departure, we confirmed that with the deputy CEO at the time. Uh, he was overseeing engineering. Um, again, he said, uh, yep, leave it until the, the restructure's in place. Right. And they we'll just review it. picked up in that. So then we took that to the ELT on the 1st of February and they said they didn't have sufficient information going forward with what they were going to need and to put it on hold again. So my question was, oh. um, not why, we, <coughs> why didn't we buy it in that year? Why didn't we carry it over? when we still have a need for it, um, but you've answered that, it was a, a different process. So that we're gonna fund this out of the uh, um, plant reserves. Correct. Which, were we going to do that? Originally, in, yes. Originally anyway, so we've just seen an increase in the reserves because it didn't carry over as a project. Well, the, the, in theory, the, the funds weren't expended. Yeah. Yeah, so. The reality is the money's there to be able to purchase what we need to do the job. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll second this motion. Does there anyone um, wish to speak to the motion? I have a question. Does the mover? Oh, we have a question. Councillor Hancock. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. I'm still a little bit confused about the um, resolution. So if we've... Up the top we're saying the total estimated is $2.5 and that'll get... That's including plant number 2020. Correct. But down the bottom, we're saying that we're going to do plant 2001. It's not budgeted for, so it's not part of the 2.5. Not part of the 2.5. Right. And so, and we're going to, in this resolution, it's saying that we're saying, yes, if there's sufficient funds in the plant reserve, how come we don't know if there's sufficient no, funds no, in the plant reserve? The, the plant reserve is is uh, fluctuating time. Our internal income goes in there, the depreciation goes in mm. there. Mm. And then the other key factor about this purchase will be what the prices the are trading. coming back. Mm. And that's based on the spec. So in theory, uh, the, the, um, the accountants have looked at the numbers, what money we've got coming in that at the moment, and we should be fine in the reserve to have funding for that sixth grader. Um, the reason we're pushing that one forward, it's actually being used as a maintenance grader at the moment, but um, it would be orphaned. We've replaced all the maintenance graders. We, the, the most we've got on any grader, maintenance grader at the moment is 4,000 hours. These are all a slightly different build machines with the bigger tyres, and otherwise we'd replace five and then we'd have one odd grader and we'd have to go to tender for ah. next year. Mm. So if we can get it in with this lot, and plus buying multiple items, uh, there's always a chance of a better deal. So, but but you won't know until you until, until you put it. In, you won't know if we can afford it or not. 
until we get the price, the, the actual fixed prices back, and then we'll come to council with a report to go uh, to either approve the purchase, not approve the purchase. Oh, so you will come back? Yeah, well, yes, okay. to. There's no purchase prices or anything in there. This is just yep, purchase. Yep, yep. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, Councillor McMullen. Through you, I've got a question, probably for Manager Dave. You talk about the construction radius and maintenance. What? Well, it wouldn't be a lot of difference in. Uh, the uh, with with the maintenance graders, we run the smaller tyres on them, the twelve hundreds. Um, also, we put a ball blade on the front and a 12-foot mould board. Now, there's some, uh, some like them, some don't. But with the 14s, they were tearing the steps off all the time, mm. trying to tuck it in, doing maintenance work, mm. in drums. Uh, yeah. Right, with the construction graders, we run the 17.5 tyres. This is on the old spec with the old manager. Uh, we don't put a ball blade on the front. We put an auto lube system on them and we have 3D machine control so that you can do a full design... And you get your laser. There'd be a them. fair bit of difference in price. Like There's a bit of difference in price, yeah. but you remember you're taking a, a gas knob blade oh, yeah, off yeah. the front. What I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, uh, my, I, mean, I, was, I was thinking why, why are we not getting all construction graders with the new system so that, you know, if Joe Bloggs is out there doing the road and they mm. want to use him, but yeah. 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 But we don't, we don't know until we actually come back. Last time, that's what they wanted to go with. Yeah. You see? They'll have so to get the dumpy level out and do everything like they did in the old days. The, Definitely. The, mm. the, the maintenance graders have still got a, a full 2D system on them. Yeah. They come yeah. with that standard. Yeah. Okay. Does the move wish to speak yeah, to the motion? Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, thanks, Dave, for the report. It was very informative. I, the thing I like about it is the feedback. Uh, you went out and spoke to all the different departments and, and the operators, and that's really invaluable, I think. So I commend you for that. And yeah, I'm happy to support this motion. Look forward to seeing some bright new yellow things in the near distant future. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak against the motion or for the motion? I'll speak for the motion. I, I would hope this is a start of actually um, having uh, the feedback that I get from staff is having um, the staff be able to pick the machines that they want once we approve the general purchase. <clears throat> So I'm very glad to see the actual detailed operator feedback and I would like to see that we've got a new way of doing things rather than just ask the team leader or whatever that we actually, the operator of the machine gets to pick what they use and then we challenge the, uh, the operators for the most efficiency we can get out of the, uh, the plant. Um, but giving them the opportunity to pick what they want. I don't think we in uh, council should be doing that. I think we should be actually giving the people that are doing the hours on the machines the ability. So I'm very glad with this report and certainly would like to get all the machines down to 5,000 hours and turn them over and then really uh, get some seriously good um, resale um, prices on them, which will... Uh, give us less <coughs> in our um, maintenance, um, in our mechanics and that, uh, with the feedback that we've got old machines and so forth, that we really only do servicing and um, not clog up our um, uh, workshops. So I'll be certainly supporting this motion of council. Does anyone else wish to speak? Then does the move wish to sum up? We'll go to that vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, do we have a mover? <coughs> I'd like to move that Council continue to hold the ordinary meetings on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month, commencing at 9am, except for January when a single meeting will be held on the Wednesday, the 25th of January 2023, to hold the ordinary meetings in the Council Chambers uh, Ernest Brock Room, if applicable, for the months of January to August 2023, except for the first meeting in February and March, will, which will be held in Injun and Surat, respectively, as per resolution number OM-09.2022-053. Uh, 
adopt the 2023 ordinary meeting schedule from January to August 2023 as presented and attached to the officer's report. Uh, four, consider the remainder of the meeting schedule locations for the months of September to December 2023 at a future meeting. Um, five, um, hold a trial of councillor briefings on the second and fourth uh, Tuesday of, uh, or might, um, if, um, so which is our council meeting? Second yeah, and second fourth? And fourth. Uh, uh, second and fourth Tuesday of each month, commencing at 9 a.m., to free operational staff up um, with uh, off weeks uh, with no um, uh, council um, uh, meetings being held. Um, yeah, and that's it. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Mr. Chair, you used the word pilot. Did you want to well, have a uh, trial, trial? Sorry, apologies. Yeah. And um, uh, did you want to put a time period around oh, that? Oh, just for the just for the year or till we like have a reason. Uh, Council McMullen. I just put dot point two, Ernest Brock room if applicable. Or wasn't what's well, that'd be if no. we couldn't if be in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if we couldn't be in here. Okay, that's right. I'm happy to second that, Mr. Mayor. Righto. Um, uh, Councillor Hancock. I do have a question. Please go ahead. Um, commencing at the briefings commencing at 9 a.m., uh, would that lock us in to have to commit? Commence that briefing at 9 a.m. when sometimes we might have a deputation or something else beforehand. I'm my question is: is do we actually need to have a commencing time on the briefings? So well, we actually comes? did have it. Actually, that's a good point. I, we did have it 9:30, so it it was allowed Councillor Burkett to be there. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I. But my question is: do we it? just do, have no time? Do we need then... to have a commencement time on the briefings? Um, look, through the chair, I think you do have to, um, uh, from a um, statutory perspective, do have to say the dates and the times um, and the months um, for your meetings, potentially not necessarily your briefings, but no. um, through the chair, I think, yeah. Kel, um, yeah, you could probably give us... And we do add the time Sorry, times. if somebody's talking, I didn't hear them. Uh, apologies. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, <laughs> Councillor Taylor. I was just saying that um, with a commencement time for the briefings, it does um, it does assist with um, your scheduling of diaries and and managing your time around that. Um, you could be flexible to a degree uh, if council agreed to that. Would you put with the general undertaking that meetings will start at? Nine or nine thirty. I know you can't do it for the for the ordinary meetings. You must have a start time. Yeah. For the other ones, you can have whatever you like, and that would allow Kelly to have some flexibility to make it work for whatever the pressures are. Councillor Guthrie. My suggestion was following on from what Kelly was saying. Maybe have a nine o'clock start, and then in brackets afterwards to enable a diary meeting to be held, if applicable. Which means that then, if the diary meeting doesn't need to be held, yeah, we start, start later. later. But you've actually got a starting point to enable your diary meetings to be held. John. Oh, no, don't you do it, sorry. So, well, I, I think it needs to, and we have also got in our motion that if uh, majority councils don't want a briefing and there's no need, so I think we need to have some flexibility all the way around. So I don't mind, what was that wording, Councillor O'Neill, you were saying? Uh, second of uh, commencing at, um, uh, commencing at 9 a.m., Do, um, does, it, does it need to be, once again, does it need to be in the meeting? Can we not have a Unless general understanding at 9.30? Yeah. That's right. Mm. Unless yeah. otherwise agreed. Uh, commencing at 9 a.m. Uh, hold the, the second or fourth Tuesday of each month with the general understanding that the briefing will start at 9 a.m. is what I said. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> or 9.30. Like if 9.30. It, yeah, it yeah, doesn't be stressful, mate. Um... Well, yeah, but you've got to say it now because if, oh, it, can, if my, it can make a big difference that you can go and do your work and that. Yeah, but it, it could ch my whole route thing could be changed next can, year. Can we put, understand that the briefing will commence at 9 or 9.30 um, 
that this is well, flexible or due to, due to flexibility. From Councillor Burkett, what time would your bus run finish? You have to have them at school by 8.30. 8 .30. So, so 9.30, 30. definitely, but yeah. yeah. But I don't want to, you know, yeah. I've got to be late, I'll be late. Sort of thing, but. It's worked quite fine on briefing days, okay. yeah. starting at 9.30. If you guys are happy with that, I'm yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy yeah. to make it nine thirty, yeah, and happy. then and I'll just put as required um, after that because um, as in because we've got that thing that if there's no no uh, nothing needed then we don't. Have well, there's going to be situations where we we might have a deputation at eleven o'clock and we could start at eleven and finish in the afternoon. That's yeah. why I think we yeah. need to have or flexible. Vice versa. Word. Can we just put nine thirty a.m. and the word flexible? Or in agreed brackets. to by um, councillor. I know, Cal, it's hard, but I just don't want to put us in a resolution, yeah. then we can't. So this. Got to have, I think what Cal's saying every week. Yeah, 9 30 is the understanding. Yeah. 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 It's just if something comes up, that we need to be able to change that. And we manage that currently. Yeah. yeah. But I it's think not that a time in there. By saying with a general understanding, we all generally accept that it'll start at 9 30 in the event that through Kelly or Edwina or a councillor has said, I can't get there till 9.30 mm. or whatever, then that call can be made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the intent is that everyone gets there, right? And that's why that flexibility is there to help people do that. So is the seconder happy with that motion? Yeah, Mr Mayor, yeah. yeah. Right, oh, well, that's the motion then. Um, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. All those against, 7-1 um, if I can call for a division. Okay. Through you, Mr Mayor, I believe your guests are here for... Oh, is it 10 o'clock, is it? 83. Oh, right. we'll, just, we'll just adjourn. Uh, we'll start the meeting again, 11.06. Um, yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. Right. Oh, um, moving on to eleven point three, advertising spending policy. Do we have a mover, Councillor Guthrie? I'd like to move that Council One adopt policy number P twenty one forward slash three, the advertising spending policy as presented. Two, repeal any previous versions of the advertising spending policy, removing any versions from the website and the policy register, and three, update the website and policy register with the revised policy. Second, Councillor Ladbrook. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Just a couple of um, questions. And, and first, just a, a, just need a space in appropriate, ex, inappropriate expenditure. Oh. Just between the in and in, in and in election. Just make sense. Um, I looked at the uh, current policy and the, and the draft one today. I couldn't see too too much difference. Eric, can you no. point out what the there's, changes are? There's probably a couple of small changes. Yeah. What we're doing at the moment is we're refreshing it, firstly, under a different type of a format so we have an understanding about when the reviews are happening, yeah. who the responsible officers are, which is on the front cover of the uh, uh, of the actual policy. Yeah, that's good. Identifying yeah. that. Um, the, there's a couple of small things in there. It's a little bit more closely linked to the procurement policy, to a, a communications plan, and also to uh, to budget as well. So that we're going to start identifying those particular areas, and we're linking them to those other other areas. That's uh, they're probably the the the, the uh, changes that are made in that particular policy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does the mover wish to speak to <coughs> no, the policy uh, to the motion? Anybody else? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour. Yes. Uh, eight zero. Okay, moving on to eleven point four. Eleven point four. Uh, uh, investigation policy. Uh, do we have a mover, Councillor Ladbrook? Um, I'd like to move um, that Council adopt the policy number. P20-17, um, investigation policy as presented. <coughs> to repeal, repeal any previous versions of the investigation policy. Um, 
moving any versions from the website and policy register. And number three, um, update the, the website and policy register with the revised policy. So with that um, on point two, uh, you said removing any versions, is that correct? Yep. Yes. Just seeing, yep. Yep. Previous versions. Yep. Yeah, right. yeah, I was just checking on the removing. Okay, so do we have a second? Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Uh, please go ahead, no Councillor. Um, again, just through you to the director, is there anything you want to highlight? That uh, has been a change? No, this is a, basically just a refresh of the program of our statutory requirements for, uh, for our policies. Uh, so no, no major changes here at all. Your templates? Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. No, no major changes at all. Thank you. And we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8-0. Uh, 11.5, Entertainment and Hospitality Policy. Councillor Burkett. I'd like to move the Council 1 adopt policy number P22 forward slash 29, Entertainment and Hospitality Policy as presented to repeal any previous versions of the investigation. Uh, no. So it's a new policy. That shouldn't be in there, number two. Yeah. yeah, sorry, you are correct. Because yeah. oh. there isn't one. There is a, this right. is a new policy. So sorry. wipe out two. Yep. The new two. Update the website and policy register with the. No, nah, that wouldn't be in there either then if it's um, not a resort. With the new, uh, with the new policy. Oh, just no, don't put revised. Yes, that's correct. Update the website and policy register with this policy. With the new we'll just policy. register. Yeah. Whatever you want to put up there. Okay, Kelly. do we have I'm a easy. seconder? Councillor McMullen. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Just a question. Please go ahead. Just, just um, under 3.4 with work functions, where it says these are occasions where it may be appropriate to buy hospitality functions. Um, what about a team meeting? Like if, for example, I don't know, the CEO takes the executive leadership team, you know, offline for the day to have a meeting in the side room here, come morning tea or lunch, are you... We pay for our own for the chair. So you, you don't, when you brought everyone together... We don't cater for um, using public money, no. And that was, that's always been the case. Okay. Um, unless you're actually working through, like, your... Yeah, for a specific reason that yeah, staff um, don't get a break. But, but I'm, I'm not talking about on a regular, but like, a, no, like no, an no, off-site, you, know, you do an off-site, yep. you, you know, executive lead. What, sorry? You're not supposed to do. State government have very, there's very clear well, as to when. state. No, but I'm just saying governments have very clear guidelines on employees getting re, um, additional benefits that are work functions. Very clear. I suppose the comment to make here is, is this, this particular policy actually refers to uh, the public sector standards. Mm. Uh, so it's not necessarily state government or federal government or the local government, it's just referring to, to, the, to the public sector uh, and uh, just uh, how, how we conduct it for, uh, for council and, and community. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8-0. Uh, uh, 11.6, annual review of delegations of council, of council powers to the position of Chief Executive Officer. Council McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that <coughs> Council 1 confirms the annual review of the delegations to the Chief Executive Officer pursuant to section 2574 and to confirm, confirm that council confirms that the current delegation to the chief executive officer for the legislation contained in this report will remain unchanged from the review. Um, yeah, we have a second there. Uh, Councillor Ladbrook and uh, any opposition, does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Um, hundred and fourteen. Thank you. Eleven point seven. Human rights policy. Uh, do we have a mover? <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Councillor Ladbrook. I'd like to move that Council adopt um, policy number P22-25, Human Rights Policy as presented, and two, update the website and policy register with the new policy. We have a seconder. Councillor Hancock and any opposition, does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Thank you. 13.1, trustee, per trustee permanent in June RSL room. Councillor Guthrie. That Council One acknowledge the RSL room at the Indian Memorial Hall is the traditional meeting place of the Indian RSL, and that Council will not unreasonably withhold approval for the Indian RSL to exclusively use the space on the condition that the Indian RSL meet all the requirements of the trustee permit. And two, write to the Indian RSL acknowledging their ongoing occupancy and provide in principle support for future grant applications. Uh, Councillor McMullen seconds that. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Director Lee. Um, just the sentence, I'm just wondering why we need to have in here that Council will not unreasonably withhold approval for the engine RSL to exclusively use the space on the condition that they meet all the trustee. If we're issuing them a trustee permit, well, we really can't. Like, I'm just wondering why that needs to be in the resolution because it's sort of it's yeah, got a bit um, of a negative tone to it. It certainly does. The, the trustee permit only offers a three-year period. Um, so some of the issues raised by the Injun RSL were around getting a, a longer-term agreement. So effectively what the resolution is trying to do or the recommendation is trying to do is acknowledge that you know, the intention is there to continue to give, um, engage with the RSL and continue to do that. However, um, it does just have that caveat that says was as long as they are meeting those conditions. So it, it's sort of giving them the keys to the castle without um, making it open slower. Okay, thank you. Okay, so no one wishes to speak. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Um, item fourteen point one feedback on services Australia Roma office. I'd like to move the council right to honourable Bill Shorten, MP, Minister for Government Services, to advocate for a full return of services to Roma. Uh, including um, floating opportunities of council being able to help finding uh, finding accommodation to house a office um, to house a um, Centrelink office in Roma. Um, and provide feedback from the survey expressing concerns over the lack of Services Australia presence in the Maranoa. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Ladbrook. Um, okay, we'll go on and I'll speak to the vote. I've got a question. Please go ahead. We went out to the um, public earlier in the year to, to get the survey results and that's yep. been tabled here. Um, have we gone back to date to the interagency group to discuss the results of the survey? Mm, look, I'd have to take that question on that, as I'm not quite sure. Through you, Mr Mayor. No, interagency haven't seen. I've, we've, I've spoken to them um, and just snippets of some of the feedback, um, but no, I wanted it to go to council first. So, so Mr Mayor, um, uh, for, for completeness, um, um, I don't know if the timing is is relevant, but I, I um, submitted an S one seventy A in relation to to this, um, and now we've got a report. Um, I, I was of, of the understanding it was going to come to a council briefing first, so that we could go through the um, results, because um, uh, you may recall and other councils may recall that the interagency group had done a power of work as to coming up with a real solution 
um, and they're still working on that. When Fiona was still with council, she was leading that. Um, now, obviously, with Fiona going, um, I'm not too sure what interaction has been happening. Um, some some weeks ago, I spoke to Tanya. She reached out to me, and that's when I issued the S one seventy A to understand where the survey results were at. Um, I just wonder. Oh, I mean, I have in principle no problem with writing to the the minister, but I just wonder if we should be um, understanding the completeness of where the interagency is at in terms of finding a solution, because they they've been doing a power of work, and I can't tell you where that's at today. And we might be jumping the gun, writing to the minister, offering something. Um, that is in competition or what, whatever the um, circumstances might be? Um, just through the chair, I recall at the time um, that we were going out to consultation that uh, our staff had actually met with the interagency and they were really quite firm that they didn't want to be involved in any um, correspondence or conveying any sentiment around advocacy for for services simply because, you know, there was a conflict for many of them in relation to their current, um, I guess, agency's view on, on you know, uh, shared services, et cetera. So the conversation I had with, with Tanya, who, who um, I understand is the chair of the um, interagency, is that she has, um, they did um, quite a bit of work in getting the survey out to, to all of the stakeholders they possibly could to get the, the feedback and, and that they didn't want to, um, uh, firmly put something to council because of the work that they had been doing in coming up with the solution, um, which may not be exactly what we had, um, but and that may not be the way we go, but we should be working with that group as Fiona had for a long time um, in, in making sure that we are collectively coming together to find a solution. But my question is how long do we wait? But anyway, uh, I well, we could, um, like. Uh, mm. No, no, I, just should be meeting chair, I just thought that n a number of the members of, of the group actually had a conflict because the federal government had a very specific position um, in relation to um, shared service models and um, m many of the group actually received federal funding. And that's, that's as I recall, which is why we were leading the advocacy in relation to collating the, the have your say and, and making sure mm -hmm. that it got in front of a minister. And the, and the point that Tanya made was that they did a power of work to get that out to their stakeholders and clients and whoever that um, have been impacted by the closure of the Centrelink and that um, when she reached out to me and I put that S170A in was to where is it out of the results back and what mm. are the next steps in terms of working with the interagency as council had um, uh, uh, encouraged Fiona to do from the get-go um, before the, the, yep. the next steps. I'm not saying this is where we end up, but I just sure. wonder if it's a step sure. too soon before we actually work with the community uh, that are on the ground. Yeah. I think Councillor Hancock. Um, I'm just wondering whether we can have a briefing um, on this and then actually write to the Minister as if we can come up with a solution. Because if you put a solution forward and having some accommodation... Um, might be part of that solution, but I just wonder if we, because we've tried advocating in other ways um, that hasn't worked, and so I'm wondering if we actually put forward a solution with the advocating, it might um, be more beneficial than just writing. Um, and, and to be able to get up, get that full um, solution, I think we need a briefing with not only our staff but also with um, the interagency to be able to f try and get a solution that we're going to government with. But I think. The, as far as I understand, I might have this wrong, they weren't looking for a full replacement of the Centrelink office. So though it's like a lesser uh, level of service, whereas I'm in favour of the actual getting our Centrelink office. We've got a new, um, we've got a new uh, federal government. Uh, the last federal government had a very negative view on it. So the new federal government may have a different view. So that's what, but... If someone wants to move, if they want to lay it on the table and see if council want to wait for that. But otherwise, I'm happy to talk to the motion. I'll move we lay it on the table, Mr Mayor, to uh, allow a full briefing on this and invite the interagency to understand what their work has been and whether we can actually bring it all together uh, and a, a further report back come, come back to council, which would be off the back of what you've um, obviously moved here today. Uh, all those in favour of that? Yes. Um, all those against? Uh, so are you in favour, Councillor yeah. Burkett? 
Okay, that's 5-3 if I can call for a division. And I suppose, Mayor, that the intent would be that, that this item is on the first meeting of 2020. Yeah, that's well, it depends if a briefing can happen before then. Um, uh, if not, the briefing would be February. February, so it'll Early be... Early February? It'll be February. 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 Burkett. I'd like to make the Council one approve the request from the Roma Kidneys Rugby Union Football Club for sponsorship of their rugby Roma Rugby Sevens tournament to be held in Roma on the 4th of February 2023. Two, provide financial support as a bronze sponsor for the men's all women's bowl at a cost of $1,000 GST exclusive to be allocated to the sponsorship budget GL2887.2249.2001. Three, request sponsorship acknowledgement before and during the event in accordance with benefits listed in the sponsorship prospectus, including any invitation to the Mayor to, to present a trophy. Do you have a second? Councillor Ladbrook, any opposition? I have a question. Uh, Councillor Hancock, please go ahead. Uh, through Mr Mayor. Um, Officer Georgie, just double checking and I, um, just point three where it says about um, including uh, the invitation of the mayor to present the trophy. I, I'm just wondering if we're being a little bit cheeky because we're only a bronze sponsor. We're not a gold exactly. sponsor, and the and the sponsorship is um, that's not actually in the sponsorship proposal. Um, that's not in the bronze sponsorship proposal. Okay. Everything else is, um, and so I just wonder if we're being a bit forthright. Um, being that we're only putting in bronze sponsorship, I'm sure that there's going to be a gold sponsor who would probably be putting in more money, who they would probably be thinking as a gold sponsor they would be presenting the trophy. That would be for the cup, wouldn't it? So, I'm just asking. Cup, plate, bowl, I think they go in. As a rule, usually. So I don't think they're for the presentation. No, I'm just... Yeah, well, like in any sevens competition, they have you play for the cup and the... But like there's usually three categories, so oh, well, that yeah. makes sense then. Gold or the girls. Well, it one. doesn't actually say the girls, in bronze sponsorship. That's not what's been. Yeah, but it says provide support bronze oh. sponsorship for the men's and women's bowl. Yeah. And also, Councillor Hancock, this has happened in previous years, and that's been what's happened anyway. Was it a bowl? Don't know. All all I know is asked to present one trophy, or whatever. I'm sorry. Sure that present that. a trophy, maybe would be. Mm. A bit. No, it's a bronze trophy for the. No, it, I think leave it up to the club. I think that's what its intention is. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we've got to find out. Goal, if there's three categories, the goal sponsor would be the cup winner. Like, please don't read me wrong. I don't have a problem with the mayor presenting a trophy. No, no. I was just, it just looked a bit forthright. If I was a gold sponsor, I'd be a bit. I think Councillor Burkett's right, though. So if you look at the bronze, it says bowl. If you look at the silver, it says plate. But then when it gets to the. Um, the goal that says championship, you imagine that's a trophy. So would you just change it to present the bowl? Well, that's what it's through the chair. Says. I mean, you can interpret a bowl or a plate as a trophy. It's an award, uh, or present the award. You know, just present the trophy for the bowl um, category or bowl division. I don't know. So but what about it just as previous years because yeah. that's what they've done? Yep, that'll be good. That's fine. I'm happy with that. That'll be better. The resolution is, it says you're uh, suggesting you present the trophy to the bronze sponsor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which previous years all fit though. It's previous years. So yeah. who who moved it and me? Um, and I'm happy. Okay, is the mover happy with that? Definitely. Uh, so we do we have a second? Yeah. A second are happy with it? Yeah. Okay, that's the motion. Does anyone wish to speak <coughs> to it? Oh, Mr. Mayor, I don't think it's a great thing to have any. Big tournaments in in town, not just for the sporting fraternity, but for the economic booth, uh, boost and the spectators. So I think it's a great thing that we're supporting this again. It's it's a success, and they're a pretty good, well run organisation. Okay, so on uh, does anyone else wish to speak? On that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. 
14.3, beautification of Parkland Jackson. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council. One receive and note the report and response of resolution number OM slash 10.2022 slash 21. And uh, that um, council approve the scope of works for one, two, and three. With a total grade project cost ex estimate excluding GST of $4,265. 60, um, uh, subject to council accessing um, appropriate grant funding. Cool. Can I, I take it out of the budget? There's a budget attached yeah, to it. Yeah, it's maintenance. There's oh, a WRO. Yeah. Yeah. There's a WRO. 12821. Yep. I looked for that. Yeah. Page 170. The work order, yeah. I'm on 170. Operation yeah. budget. Down the bottom. Page oh, 171. And then to review the quarter three. Hmm. Hmm. Can I ask, did they ask for flowers down there and is yeah. this? No, they didn't. They didn't, what? Yeah. I can talk to that if you like, and, and I'm sure. sure the director will be able to back it up, but it, this comes off the back of a, um, a you know, a catch up down there. Yeah. I'll, I'll amend that resolution if I can, Mayor, just first. Uh, total project costs, um, excluding GST of $4,265.60. You'd be costed through current operational budget work order 12821. Uh, 2331 and reviewed at the quarter three update. Okay, do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Hancock, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Councillor O'Neill? Um, I think this is a really worthwhile project for Council to support today. Um, we had the opportunity uh, recently to catch up with a number of the community um, down there and this was their number one um, or there were a number of things, but this was a, a high priority, was the beautification of these um, uh, assets in their community. They're very proud, particularly of the park. Um, um, you know, work has gone in previously to uh, put together, um, you know, garden beds, etc. They just want to have the right plants in, and they spoke about native plants uh, to ensure that they um, could uh, tolerate, um, you know, our uh, conditions out here. And they were very happy that that would, um, you know, work towards beautifying what is a, a you know, a well-used part of, of Jackson. Uh, and I think um, that this would um, be a real gesture uh, of our support of a smaller community that's willing to back, um, um, you know, what they've got um, and um, and showcase it for not only their community and the and the and the, the broader community of Jackson, but but also the uh, the many travellers that. Um, that uh, call into Jackson to use the facilities. And, and as I noticed when I went through the other day, the play park uh, at the CWA Hall. So um, I, I think this would be a really worthwhile project for councils to support. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Uh, I see the directors there and I just wanted to say thank you to him because um, he's put a pair of work into this and I just, I just as Councillor O'Neill said, they're very, this was one of the things that they really wanted down there and I, I just thank him for taking that on board and um, going to deliver this project to Jackson. Thank you very much. Uh, through the Chair, thank you Councillor Taylor, very much appreciated and I'll pass that on to the staff that were involved with me preparing this report. Thank you. Okay, I'll speak to the motion. Uh, I do believe that this is uh, one of the benefits of uh, operating locally. We have a local director for the Yulebar area and thank the staff and uh, the director for the input and in getting the report able to be delivered. And I'll look forward to, uh, in all areas of the Maranoa, but also in this case, to be able to carry out the wishes of the residents um, of the Maranoa by operating locally. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Okay, does the mover wish to sum up? Uh, thanks very much. Um, I, I echo the sentiments, um, thanks to the director, uh, but I also want to say uh, a big thank you to the uh, community members that took the time to come and speak to us uh, and to come up with practical solutions to address um, uh, what they, they wanted to see council um, you know, invest with them uh, to achieve. So um, 
uh, I hope uh, those people know who they are. I'm sure they'll be watching uh, to see this report um, get up today. And um, I think we'll all um, um, you know, look forward to, to seeing this project come to fruition. OK, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8-0. Page one seven three. Fourteen point four expression expressions of interest. Trust lease Roma Senior Citizens Hall Lot four on SP one oh three 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 five. Council McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'd like to move that Council <coughs> one pursuant to section two three six one B two of the Local Government Regulation 2012 Queensland, grant a trustee lease to Roma U3A Inc. Incorporated, being a non-for-profit community organisation without tender or auction for a term of six years for the Roma Senior Citizens Centre being lot four on SP 10335. Two, pay the rates and associated charges levied on lot four on SP 103335. Three, set the rent at $1 per annum. Four, require the Roma U3A Incorporated to enter into sub-agreements for subsequent use of the building by other hirers. And five, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or dele Delegate to enter into final negotiations and execute the lease. Okay, we have a second to Councillor O'Neill. With a couple of suggestions, if I can. Um, huh? yeah. Very, very mild ones. Yeah. Just if um, uh, we'll change, my suggestion is to change number five to number seven and have in there Councillor McMullen uh, two things. One, because I couldn't actually see any of the lease document um, that we embed in the, um, uh, the requirement to uh, maintain the wooden floors uh, in uh, the building. Um, uh, and that is because of my next point. Uh, which is that um, we uh, also write to uh, the former lessees of the uh, Senior Citizens in the Hall and thank them for their trusteeship over this community asset uh, and that we thank them for the um, commitment that they had in not only maintaining the entire building but the passion they had for maintaining the hardwood polished floors for uh, many, many years. Um, just through the chair, I think you actually did right to thank them um, at the time that they surrendered their lease. That's <coughs> a, um, not that that should stop you thanking them again. I did think that, CEO. I just couldn't remember. Yeah, it was definitely when we when we they finished up. It was definitely we did well. We we asked for it to happen. So. But I know the remaining members of the now. Um, Cancelled, um, Roma citizen, uh, Roma senior citizens would really appreciate that that mm. acknowledgement and embedding in the the lease the the requirement to to really maintain. And I know U three A will do it, but I think it's a gesture to illustrate that um, uh, we also support the work that they've done over many many years themselves. I might add, polishing and whatever. Yeah, I'm happy then. Yeah. Can I just ask a quick question? Yeah, please go ahead. In number two there, where it says pay the rates, do they pay the rates or do we pay the rates? Council, council pay the rates. The council pay the rates. We Thank you. Have there, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have. I just wondered why we put it in there, but that's okay. Well, we don't actually say council, do we? Or yes, do we, we do, have because it every up one top? of those, that council one, the council two, the council oh, yeah, three, right that's on. how we do yeah, our resolutions. Yeah. Everyone's... It starts, we don't read it out every time. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I understood that. I was just checking. Thanks. Okay, so um, so have you got that wording there, Councillor O'Neill? Because the yeah. requirement of the trustee lease to maintain the wooden floors of the building, right to the former trustees of the Roma, of the Roma Citizens Hall, thanking them for uh, their commitment to maintaining what is a uh, 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 truly wonderful asset for the community.
Righto. Um, so, um, okay, does the move wish to speak to the motion? Motion. Check the numbers. The numbers are not correct now. One, two, three. You can one, two, three. Sorry? You've got the numbers. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all right. right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. May, I just think it's good. Great. The uh, U3A have been utilising the building for some months now, and I know they're very keen to go further now, or once the lease is signed, sealed, and delivered. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Please go ahead, Councillor O'Neill. Oh, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I support this as well. I, I do think the um, the uh, association, which is the U3A, not just in Roma but across the, the country, uh, is um, uh, taking, uh, a, you know, in our case, the place of the um, uh, Roma senior citizens, uh, and it's empowering, you know, the um, old, uh, you know, older generation in our community to continue uh, to uh, come together uh, and to, um, uh, you know, uh, undertake activities as a group, and and um, this will be a perfect use of the senior citizens of Hall in Roma and I know uh, that Linda and um, her um, her executive and and the the members will um, will look after it for um, the next use into the future as well so I'm happy to support it does anyone else wish to speak to the motion I'll speak um, I do believe that um, having the University of the third age actually take um, uh, use of that building as it's been happening for a while but obviously handing over the baton from uh, senior citizens. Um, I do believe it skills uh, people up in the future and also is the camaraderie and the connection of meeting together so I'm certainly going to fully support um, the University of the Third Age and what they're doing there and what their plans are for the future as well as I'd like to thank the uh, senior citizens for all of the um, careful looking after of the building that they've done in the past uh, and always having um, the interest of the building and council at heart and like to congratulate them on a job well done in the past. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the mover wish to sum up? No, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. <clears throat> okay, fourteen point five. Hibernian Hall termination of user agreement. Nance West and request to enter into a user agreement. Soul Dance Studio. Do we have a mover, councillor? I have a. I have a conflict. Oh, please go ahead. Uh, I have a conflict on item 14.5, Hibernian Hall, termination of user agreement, Dance West 03, and request to enter into a new agreement with Soul Dance Studio. The declaring council is myself, Wendy Taylor. Uh, the person with interest related party is Jody Noon, who's a family friend. The particulars of interest is Jody's dance studio is mentioned in the report, um, and she's the one giving up her lease. Um, it's a declarable conflict of interest, and although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have a perspective of bias. Therefore, I would choose to remain in the meeting. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Okay. Um, do we have a seconder? Oh, that's right. I'm yeah. on the mover, but I haven't. Please go ahead. We've got to do. It's up there. Yeah. No, no, on the move the report. Yeah, we can't do that yet. We're good. No, it's all I'm saying. Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to move. I was going to be the mover. Oh, sorry. Right. I'm happy to move that it's in the public interest that Councillor Taylor participates and votes on agenda item 14.5 because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. Okay, we have a seconder, Councillor O'Neill. Um, all those in favour? She, she can't vote, so. Six, six zero. Six zero. No, I'm happy to move the motion. Um, please go ahead. Uh, I'd like to move the Council One approve the request from Dance West 03 to terminate the user agreement of Council for the use of the Hibernian Hall. To approve the request from Soul Dance Studio to enter into a user agreement with Council 
for the use of the Hibernian Hall to conduct dance lessons. Three, authorise a Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to execute the user agreement. We have a seconder, Councillor McMullen. Anyone wishes to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Seven zero. And page one ninety seven. Wouldn't it be eight no. zero? No. Um, no. Um, through the chair, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Ladbrook was not in the room. Item fourteen point six ten. Please go ahead, Councillor Taylor. No. no, sorry. I just didn't realise that uh, Councillor Ladbrook wasn't in the room. Sorry. Right. Uh, item 14.6, tender 230.12, lease of council-owned land on grazing, uh, for grazing purposes, lot 2 on SP 212826. Do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council 1 accept the tender submitted by Cheryl Rogers for tender 23012, lease over lot 2 on SB 212826 Bassett Lane, East Roma, to delegate the authority to the Chief Executive Officer or delegate to enter into final negotiations and execute the lease two years if the terms are acceptable, and three, assign the income to GL 1491.1075 Council Building and Facilities Operating Revenue Lease Income. Okay, do we have a second? Councillor Ladbrook. Um, and uh, does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8 0. Item 14.8, Big Rig Tower in Tree Walk, Roma, admission. 14.7. 217. Page 217. Lease and service arrangement, neighbourhood centre. Um, <coughs> item 14.7, uh, Lease and Service Agreement Level. Uh, sorry, Lease and Service Level Agreement, Roma Neighbourhood Centre. I would like to move that Council pursuant to Section 236.1 Section 236, um, Section 236.1 B.I. of the Local Government Regulation 2012 Grant... Uh, um, sorry, that's 236.1 B.2. Righto. 236.1 B.2, is it? Yes. That's right, okay. Two of uh, the Local Government Regulation 2012 Queensland Grant, a lease to Roma Neighbourhood Centre Incorporated, being a non for profit uh, community organisation without tender or auction on the following terms. One, the lease is for the whole of Lot 1 on SP 276. 517, including the vacant land on 45 and 47 Hawthorne Street, Roma, for a nominal rent of a dollar, as permitted by Section 2364 uh, of the Local Government Regulation 2012, Queensland. Three, for a term of five years with the option to renew for a five-year term. Four, all outgoings to be paid by the tenant. Five, um, permitted use to be opera be operation, operation of a community centre, delivering services to support youth and community development, crime prevention, prevention and associated uses on a non-for-profit basis. Six, all building maintenance, provision and equip of equipment and servicing of fire in, and any security systems to be organised and funded by the tenant unless exceptional circumstances. Uh, seven, any uh, access and services required to be um, installed and paid for by the tenant. Eight, Roman Neighbourhood Centre Incorporated, um, sub-licence um, sub or casual hire fees. Facilities. Uh, facilities. Um, 
within the premises? Uh, within the premises, with all proceeds to be used to support other permitted uses and improve facilities uh, and improve facilities on the premises. Um, or, and included in that one, acknowledge that the facility, facility will be available to non or profit um, community groups um, as a meeting place. Yep, that do not, yeah. uh, um, and a fee waiver uh, would be granted if they do not have the capacity to pay. Um, and then um, then we're going to nine Roman Neighbourhood Centre Incorporated to enter into a concurrent agreement with Council in regards to the management of the facility with the agreement to include the terms as outlined in the body of the report and any other terms to the satisfaction of councillors, uh, chief executive officer. Um, Ten authorise the chief executive officer or delegate to execute the lease agreement, the lease agreement, and any other associated documents. And that's it. Do we have a seconder, <laughs> councillor Ladbrook? Any opposition? Have a couple of questions. Please go ahead. Well, um, we'll go your first. Then Councillor Hancock, and I don't know whether O'Neill had a finger up. Um, please go ahead, Councillor Taylor. Well, my first question would be, and I have a couple, uh, how are they going to generate revenue exactly? Uh, well, that's pretty easy. They're able to charge for rooms in the facility um, and uh, they can do that as well as, um, you know, they can obviously run programs there that, that can generate um, uh, revenue as well. Okay, Kel, could you just move up the screen a little bit? Thank you. Where you've got there um, um, in number eight, uh, available not-for-profit groups at meeting place and fee waiver would be granted. How can you waiver the fee when it's got nothing to do with council? How can you put that in a resolution when it's not actually us that would have any say in whether you waiver the fee? It's not in the resolution. It would go in the uh, the lease agreement for the building that we expect that that would happen. So the understanding is that that's what the association would do if non-for-profits do not have the capacity to pay. If they have the capacity to pay, they can work that out themselves. It's, it's just something that I think is needed for both parties to say this is part of what the peppercorn lease is about. So we okay. have a copy of the we have the copy of the lease. Is that is that the well, lease no. you're talking about? If if this um, goes through, then the CEO would be left to um, um, conclude all of that, uh, as we've delegated uh, the CEO to do. So the attachment number one that we have in this report has not really is not really the lease. And uh, obviously there's some extra couple of things that will be changed that will go in there as part of the, uh, the lease if this does get supported today. So you that, have another that, question? Yeah, that, that fee waiver is not actually in this drafted lease that no, we have no, no, today. No, it was that added in. So it would have to be uh, worked into the agreement. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Hancock. So my question is about that as well, um, the fee waiver. So just so I'm perfectly clear, so the expectation is that the Roman Neighbourhood Centre Inc. would give the fee waiver. Correct. It's not that council's going to give the fee or council's going to pay the Roman Neighbourhood Centre for no. a fee waiver. No. So it's the understanding that we're giving the dollar a year and that the expectations is that there is meeting able to be held there and if there's uh, and not for profits can't afford to pay that they wouldn't pay uh, just the same as we had at the community hub um, the same uh, situation but that's part of the deal um, so could I suggest if just listening to the debate in the room that instead of saying a fee fee waiver would be granted that we just say as a meeting place at no cost well like they might have some that are happy to pay and yeah. then they 
So that's why yep, I'm saying sure. if yep, they don't okay. have a capacity because we don't want to take away their business model. Okay. Okay, uh, Councillor O'Neill. Have you got any more? Well, just leading on from what um, Madam CEO said, instead of using fee waiver, because I think that does become a bit um, uh, tricky, um, you could say no cost would be granted by them if they do not have capacity to pay. Yeah, I'm happy to put no cost in there. You can of still fee have waiver. if they have no capacity to pay. It means the same deal. It's just that fee waiver may be confused with um, council fee waivers. And, and the advantage is you've got if you have your res resolutions passed today and somebody was in dispute with the committee, they could go back to the resolution and say, look, clearly council stated the intention in that resolution was that. Um, not-for-profit groups without the capacity to pay could access the facility at no cost. Okay, for meetings, yep. Mm. Now, for meetings. Um, for meetings. yep, Councillor O'Neill. On page 259, it's got um, a layout of the three blocks and there's, there's uh, some are in pink. What's the difference? Have you got it on screen? I just don't have that document in front of me, but I'm sorry. Can you, can you scroll to that? Do you have, oh no, you won't have that no, up No. No. Oh, it's okay. the, the director has a copy now. Um, hmm. and but, sorry, Councillor, could I just ask what the question was again? Is summer in pink? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure of the purpose of why it's in pink, but um, in relation to that, um, doc or that plan that you see <clears throat> is that, uh, and as the report um, uh, suggests, is that both the car park and that grassed area and that are all one. Yeah, that um, was the next thing I was going to raise. We, we, we can't. Can, that isn't a defined car park. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be called a and car we, park. And um, we, I looked at the insurance. I'm concerned for this group if they're taking out insurance for the whole area in the lease. It's got a car park because there have been previously claims because of um, Issue, well. accidents probably um, on that site which it's not a defined car park even though the people do park on it at the school and then um, if the intent is to block that off because this is going to be the, the you know the new lessee is going to be there then Whilst it's not a car park, everyone uses this as a yeah, car park. But then this group, if they're taking a lease out over it, are they aware of potential implications on, on that particular part of it? Okay, so I'm, I'm happy to, to put in it there that council um, uh, ensures... Um, where does it say that, um, that they're actually going to be ensuring um, that? I know ensuring there's outgoings. Mr. It says um, the tenant must take out on or before the convention of state and keep policies like an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. What number is that? 149. So they'll be taking an, uh, I, I assume, insurance out of uh, the entire site in which they're leasing. So I would, um, on point four, I'd be happy to put in there all outgoings to be paid by the tenant except for insurance, which will be covered by council on the council building and land. Excuse me, you finished? Hey, do you have any others, no. Councillor O'Neill? No. Just um, that fence, is, is there's a dividing Calibon fence or something there. Yeah. So potentially that could be shifted across if they so wish to block that. Yeah, but also we're not saying that they want no, to. No, no, just, I'm just they've saying. Got to, they've got to talk about it and it's got to be part of the CEO's negotiations. Yeah, 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 no. all good. Yeah. Mr Mayor, I understand by just saying about the council building for these people will have to have their own public liability. Mm, they will. Yeah. 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 So will. That's where yeah. the car park mm. thing comes in. That's right. If there's right. an accident in the car park, that won't be council. That's yeah. and, and no disrespect to any officers, <laughs> but that word car park should But that would be the be same removed. as... Look through the chair. That's the that same as like any sporting a, It was group. a map that's been grabbed yeah. from the extension <coughs> to the original building, which might explain why the colours are there. But um, mm. uh, and if sorry, if I could just in relation to those the site plan, that um, the grassed area, so that long pink, um, pink one. <laughs> in relation to when I was having the fire evacuation 
plan redeveloped, um, we've made that that grassed area will be the evacuation um, area for people. And so we've put um, <coughs> put a new uh, access gate in that side of the colour bond into oh, the grassed yeah, area. Yeah. And then there's an access gate on the bitumen area for entrance into the building. So, but just so for clarity though, for as long as I've been on council, <coughs> the buildings and what is currently defined as a car park, which we removed that terminology, that was the neighbourhood centre and the pink, we acquired that in the last decade, that, that had a house on it. That's correct. It was a private Shared residence, just we, for completeness. We, we removed the house from we did. the block last yeah. term. Yeah. Okay, uh, so who's next, Councillor? Yeah, just for concern, I, I don't see that would be no different to a sporting. I oh know, no matter which one I use, one of us is going to have a conflict. But you know what I mean? Like they, the, the people that are take uh, occupying that area got their own insurance and everything. But overall, it's covered by council insurance and public liability. So it'd be no different to. So they shouldn't need that as a car park anyway. No, but I'm just saying in general, the whole they thing. They don't, but it's currently being used as one. Yeah. For that's school. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, now, uh, Councillor Hancock. Uh, so just a question. Uh, is it, are we leasing the whole building? It's a question that they've actually asked. Yeah. Is, it, is the lease for the whole building and the whole... Is the whole building actually up to standard to be leased out? Because from the last reports we've had, it, it needed a heck of a lot of work to get up to standard. Um, if, um, and you're very welcome to come and have a look, but it's had a... I've been in. It's had a transformation no, in the been, last... Oh, it's, since we were there. Oh, so we've spent money on it. Oh, how much has been spent on it to get it up to speed? Oh, I'd have to take it on notice about the amounts. But it's Was that... Bud did we budget for those... For that expenditure, there's today. money in the was it community done development component. Yeah, and it's come from operations, but also part of the community development um, funding that we get. Right, I'll put in S one seven A to ask. Yeah, how much we've spent on that building to get it up to speed. So, so basically, mm -hmm. it is all up to speed and can be leased out. <coughs> um, okay, so what I would do is put councils. Um, covered by councils um, building and land insurance just to cover that. They will have their own public liability, of course they will, but... And then the other thing is just up the top, uh, the lease for the whole section, um, you know, uh, um, where is that there? Yeah, uh, the whole um, of lot, um, you know, and then put words in or subject to negotiation uh, by um, by the Roman na Neighbourhood Centre Inc. Inc. Yep. So in case they don't want all of it, then they can work that out and it won't stop this getting moving and getting it actually happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, is the seconder happy with those yep. changes? Yep. Right, I'll speak to the motion. Um, I think this is very important to get this going and then we can get to the next stage of trying to deal with um, youth crime, um, providing better options for the community. Uh, as it's been said, the neighbourhood centres are available in Miles and Charleville and for some reason in the past uh, there hasn't been a value for one in Roma. So uh, this is about actually changing that and getting on with um, providing this space for community benefit <coughs> and um, then we can actually work on how to support the community and try and change some of these trends that um, uh, in the community that are not going in the right direction as far as crime and so forth as well as many other thing that, that things that neighbourhood centres work on. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Oh. Councillor Burkett. Oh, I just think it's oh, – <coughs> thanks very much to, to Director Dean and his staff. I think it's great to get this up and running. I think finally the building is getting used for what it was used to be used for, uh, servicing the needs of the community. And also I'd like to applaud the group for getting this going because there's a big big need for this in the community with the amount of crime and, and youth um, uninvolvement. Oh, I don't know, not uninvolvement, but non-involvement in the – um, Disengagement is probably a better word, um, and this is one way to do that. And I just think it's it's a great asset that moving forward, hopefully, will be utilised. 
Mm. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor O'Neill. Um, I'll, uh, I won't be supporting this today, but it's not, not because I don't believe that uh, we need a, 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 an area that is supportive of the next generation. I actually um, wholeheartedly support the sentiments that uh, the mover has expressed in relation to um, uh, providing, you know, a space that's safe, uh, and if it can encourage uh, youth off the street, um, uh, well, uh, they'll be better for that, and so will the community. My um, concern has always been: I don't believe this is the right location for this type of facility. <coughs> uh, we had an opportunity to sell the site. Um, you know, I, I did. I didn't, uh, uh, wasn't on the majority side of that, um, but we could have had a centre in a more appropriate location where um, we are spending a, a lot of money um, uh, with the works that have been happening up near the hospital at the park opposite there. I think that would have been the ideal location uh, to, um, you know, house a, a, a centre that is supporting um, the younger generation. Um, and so whilst I, I get the goals, I, I, I get the um, you know, vision, uh, particularly of the, of the members of the community that have volunteered their <coughs> time, and as Councillor Burke had said, all credit to them, um, I just can't support that this is the right location for this type of uh, facility, uh, right on two major highways. Um, uh, there are other areas in town that we could have utilised, um, but we're not. Uh, and uh, on that basis, I, I won't be supporting um, uh, issuing the lease because I don't believe the location is the most appropriate place for this type of um, um, you know, facility. Um, does um, uh, anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Hancock. Yeah, uh, Mr Mayor, it'd be no surprise that I'm not supporting this either. Um, I haven't supported it all the way through. Um, I just think that we've spent a lot of money that has gone into a building. I feel that this is more about the building. Um, and I think it should be about the people. And um, I think that the money that we spent on getting the building up to standard, we could have actually been spending on delivering those services into the community and, um, and on the people who needed it. Um, I think that we should be meeting the community um, in their own backyard, and I think that we've already got facilities that we could do that in. Um, and I think that those programs would have been more beneficial. My fear is that we could spend all this money and all credit to the people who are putting up their hand and having a go. And I actually hope it does work. But my biggest fear is that we could be spending all this money on upgrading and building <coughs> and the um, disengaged youth actually won't go to the building. Um, and so uh, for me, I just think we could have um, used that money um, on doing um, programs for them in existing facilities. Um, Councillor Hancock, you said that we have buildings that could be used for that. What um, building um, do you mean? Uh, so, Mr Mayor, to run the programs out of, we have PCYC that I think that, you know, I've been asking for having a briefing from PCYC since I've been here. Um, and so I think that that's one example um, that we could have engaged. We also could have um, looked at maybe a lease over another building that wouldn't have required the money to upgrade it. But we don't have that building, do we? No, but there's buildings in okay. town. I, ne I never said that council owned buildings. Well, I said that I there's thought facilities. That's what you actually no, no, said. I never said. I said that there's well, facilities. Well, to play the tape back. I said we have buildings. We have buildings in this town for a neighbourhood facilities town. for, for a the programs. I said, Mr. Mayor, for right. programs is what well, I said. I don't. Uh, anyway, that's interesting because. Um, but that's my point of view, and I'm allowed to speak yeah, what I believe as a, as a councillor at this table. Yeah, I was wondering whether it was accurate. Well, I believe um, it is, Mr Mayor. OK. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion or against the motion? OK, I'll sum up. Um, I do believe we've lost services. We've lost our community hub, which doesn't exist anymore. I do believe that this is a very important part of infrastructure. I believe that we cannot demonstrate value for money when we ever build anything. I don't believe there is any other options that we have on the table now that we can deliver. I also note that um, if you're dealing with youth crime, um, you know, kids uh, levitate to exactly this spot. So I do think it's actually getting kids off the street. I do believe that um, if you actually lived in Roma and grew up here, you knew that the uh, neighbourhood centre 
uh, was very successful in that same spot, a major highway. It is the place where that uh, the community can connect um, and I do believe that these services are needed and the community is waiting for us to get on and support community groups that can uh, <coughs> deliver this. So I'll certainly be supporting this motion. On that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Yes, against. Okay, 5-3 if I'm called for a division. Thank you. Uh, Fourteen point eight. The big rig tower and tree walk Roma admission. Do we have a mover? Councillor Ladbrook. I'd like to move that um, council endorse a two hundred dollar annual pass rate and a hundred and twenty dollar half yearly rate to utilize. utilize the Big Rig Tower and Tree Walk, Roma, within normal business hours. And number two, update the schedule of fees and the charges accordingly. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor McMullen, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? I just want to, um, <coughs> an amendment. I'd like to Please speak. Please go ahead. Um, I'd like to move um, an amendment, uh, if I can, to point one, which is endorse it. Uh, a $200 annual pass rate and a $100 half yearly rate to utilise the big rig tower and tree walk roma with normal business hours within normal business hours. Does the mover accept that? Um, no, I don't see why. What was that? I think Sorry. 120 bucks for six months is pretty good. Okay, so do you want to keep going with your amendment? I've moved it. Yep, okay, do you have a seconder? Any seconder for the amendment? Councillor I'll Hancock second has seconded. Okay, um, well, we'll go to the vote. All those in... Oh, uh, well, please go ahead. Um, I just think by um, uh, amending the figures, it mirrors what an annual pass is to a half-yearly pass. Um, there was a very strong argument put earlier in the year uh, about the uh, ability uh, for uh, <coughs> community members to pay um, annual passes. Um, uh, I, um, you know, all credit to our LDO here in Roma and the team for um, suggesting a half yearly pass. I just think to, to make it simple uh, and to support those that um, uh, just want to take out a half yearly pass, then um, we, we make it 50% of what an annual pass is, and that would be $100 um, a year, uh, $100 for the half year. Okay, does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd just like to mention um, anything when you go for annual passes and half yearly passes or pro rata is always mm. a little bit dearer as you come, break the scale down, I suppose is the word to, to mm. how to explain it. Okay, does anyone wish to speak for the amendment? Yes, I would like to. Please go ahead. Um, I, I, I'd be really happy with either, but 100 makes more sense. I'm just happy to see it come to the table because it got held down the last time that it, it came to the table that it couldn't happen. So for me, this is a win for the community, whichever way we go, but I'm happy to support the $100 one. Councillor Taylor, I don't believe that is um, polite to be saying held down. I don't think anyone held you down. So I don't oh, I think sorry. that... I, I don't think that... No problem. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, does anyone wish to speak for the amendment or, or against the amendment? Okay, then we'll go to the vote on the amendment. All those in, uh, in favour of the amendment? Yes. All those against the amendment? Uh, lost 3-5 if I can call for a division. Okay, we have a mover and a seconder. Uh, does the move wish to speak to the motion? Yeah, I will. Um, I'm quite excited about the $200 for yearly and the $120. Um, I've spoken to a lot of um, community members and um, they will be very happy with that. Um, you know, and even older people that don't want to run it, all they want to do is walk it. 
um, they'd be very happy. Okay. Uh, does anyone wish to speak against the motion <coughs> or for the motion? Um, uh, well, Councillor O'Neill, please go ahead. Did someone else or someone before me? Is that what uh, no. I was just wondering, uh, do you want to speak against the motion? I'm speaking for it. For the motion. Okay. No, there's no one against, so... Um, I, I'll support this. Um, um, you know, we've got to each over, 20, uh, over $20 for half a year. Um, this is common sense uh, to me. Uh, and um, if supported today, all credit to the councillors uh, that were <coughs> opposed to this earlier in the year. Clearly, there is a demand uh, from uh, our community to um, use this facility for probably what it wasn't built for. Um, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, it shows that um, we're willing to... Uh, work with um, our um, our community members uh, so that they can access this. Um, I've already used a five dollar pass myself to go up and take Georgie. We lasted three minutes, so that was a good investment uh, to the Maranoa Regional Council. But for those that I did see on this particular day using it uh, for um, exercise purposes, good on them. Uh, and um, uh, I strongly urge all councillors. Uh, to uh, support this today. And um, again, all credit to you, um, uh, if you do, for changing your mind from earlier in the year. Okay. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak on this? Then does the move wish to sum up? No, I'm happy. We're going to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight, uh, seven, uh, eight, zero. Okay. Just uh, we'll just adjourn for a minute while we read this. If everyone, okay, mm -hmm. fourteen point nine material change of use, undefined use, distillery, cellar door, function, facility, and short term accommodation. Reference two o two two slash two o six nine eight. Well, I've got a question first. Did you have a question? I was going to move. Right. Well, I've got a question. Um, in regards to Mr Lyons's um, uh, feedback on this facility and uh, his um, um, feedback, I think that's in here, isn't it? Yep. Um, in regards to the amount of use, is this in keeping with um, what for instance, has been given in other approvals? Yes, the conditions are proposed in accordance with similar approvals in the area. In the area, yeah. yeah. So, so the number of events and the operating hours match other other similar facilities. Right, the amount of events a year of um, uh, equivalent as well. Yep. Um, and also, if there is noise issues and so forth, mm -hmm. um, uh, there obviously can be dealt with in this as a separate matter. Yep. Is that correct? And when can noise issues be a problem? What time of um, uh, night can that be an issue as far as noise and that? So the current conditions are proposed that they can operate till 11 p.m. Um, but separate to that, I believe it's 10.30 to 7. Sorry, testing my memory. There are um, requirements separate to this, which we reference the environmental protection noise policy that also apply to this development. So, yes, anything after 10.30 becomes a, a noise issue under the EP reg. Right, so that will be another trigger as well. Yes. Yep. And um, as far as the privacy and so forth, um, do you think the recommended conditions uh, will give privacy to the next-door neighbour that is complaining about that or would have complained about that? Uh, yes, yeah, so based on the the adjoining neighbours' current residence, absolutely the, um, the proposed, we proposed a five metre wide um, landscape buffer to provide visual screening from the activity. Um, I do note in the submission they mentioned potentially constructing a, a new dwelling, but we, we can't really consider an application on something that's not also part of, in front of council to consider, so. Right. Do we have any other questions, councillors? Okay. Yeah, I just, I can't see 
Who's responsible for the road? Um, um, <laughs> dust proofing, are they, is that going to come into it? Yeah, yeah it is. It's probably in our kind of thing. It's, uh, mm. no. Through you, Mr Mayor, if there is excessive um, dust nuisance there, we can certainly go and investigate it. Um, there's conditions around managing nuisance, um, but there's no specific requirements we've recommended in terms of um, road upgrades or sealing or anything like that. No, we've just conditioned that heavy vehicles must access from the site south to prevent any sort of dust nuisance. Well, that's a road train route. They go through there all the time. So We found one yesterday, yes. We don't want them coming <laughs> back saying that... I mean, other mm. instances I've been on council, there's been other... App, <coughs> not distillery, but DAs where people have had to bitch them in the front of their premises to do get the approval to change the DA. So the conditions include requirements for signage to try and encourage people to come yeah. off the Warrego Highway, which you'd expect the majority of traffic would. So there's only a very short distance of unsealed surface there on the Bungee Warragai Lane before you get into their access. So I'm more thinking about if they're having a, a function and a couple of road trains go through there. It's quite. I see. It's, it's much better than they access the highway there than go back into town and come through town. You know. <laughs> I mean, they're not there every hour of the day, but there's quite a few years that, yeah. Mm. But it sounds like that's not a requirement <coughs> of council with planning. That would be a separate no. issue that have to be dealt with. Yeah. And a business decision, probably, if <coughs> road yeah. trains are going past and the patrons are getting impacted by the dust, that would be a business decision, I imagine. Yeah, any other questions, councillors? Then uh, Councillor O'Neill. I'm happy to move the deve development application for a material change of use for an undefined use distillery, cellar door function facility and short-term accommodation located on at 50 Bungee Wagarai Lane, Roma, described as lot two on RP35389, be approved <laughs> subject to the listed conditions and general um, advice, just from one through to... the advice to what's the best way to capture this um, Danielle I've, I've been in this predicament before I don't want to do it again through you Mr Mayor there'll be a total of 61 conditions now with the amendment um, that we circulated and then just the general advice I think you could reference so subject to the listed conditions and general advice the, so the listed conditions and general advice this stop yeah okay Okay, do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor McMullen, um, any uh, opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I will. Uh, through the Chair, I, I think this is an exciting um, development uh, in terms of um, offering something unique uh, for our community. All credit to the, to the applicants putting it forward. Uh, I think um, uh, having this type of um, uh, additional tourism asset uh, for our community uh, is um, it shows the confidence that people have in investing in our little part of the world. I think it's unique um, uh, from what I've seen uh, through uh, social media, what I saw at markets that I was at um, recently, people are embracing this as something new. They may not have originally been gin drinkers, they might be now. Um, but um, I, I think council should wholeheartedly back this. Um, there are a number of conditions in place uh, to uh, mitigate some of the concerns uh, that have been raised by uh, neighbours and um, that's their right to raise those as part of any development application, particularly material change of use. Um, and, uh, and so um, good on the staff for, for looking at that and, and coming up with a solution uh, to see this come to the council table for us to recommend it. Um, I hope this is a complete and utter success. Uh, and um, I, um, I look forward to um, seeing uh, what they turn this into in, in years to come. Um, uh, we've obviously had the uh, opportunity uh, prior to the development application being lodged with Council to have a briefing uh, of what um, this project entails. Uh, and um, this is private enterprise doing what private enterprise does best. Uh, and uh, that's investing in themselves, investing in a um, a, uh, you know, a, an idea that um, uh, they want to drive uh, and this is our way as a local government of, of backing that development. So um, good on them uh, and I hope there's full support around the council table today just to um, see this approved and 
and uh, they'll be up and going um, uh, in readiness for the tourism season and, and with Eastern in the country next year. Okay, does someone else wish to speak to the motion? I'll speak to the motion. Uh, I am concerned about the impact. I do think that council needs to be considered with the fact that you have a uh, rural uh, area uh, and um, then you um, change the use. You need to consider the neighbours. Um, and I do believe... Uh, had advice that we've heard that this is in line with other approvals that have been given. Uh, but I uh, wish that um, and do hope that the owners of this development work with the neighbours that have concerns to mitigate this. And this is only, you know, one thing, which is the approval, but it's how everyone can work together for the benefit of everyone. So. I would like to see where this impact is not noticed by neighbours because I do believe that um, they were there first and this is a change, almost nearly a home-based business in a way, even though it's got a, an MCU for an undefined use. I think, um, I think that we need to be really careful about making sure that we don't affect uh, residents' quiet enjoyment, and I would hope that there is enough safeguards and just common, uh, you know, decency that we work on this so it's the impact is reduced as much as possible, uh, which will allow a new business to start in the Maranoa that is certainly exciting, as well as um, having respect for the residents that uh, live in the area all of the residents that live uh, in the area. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? <coughs> does the mover wish to sum up? No, thanks very much, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, we've seen um, you know, a really successful business uh, whilst uh, selling different products, um, uh, not too dissimilar in nature, uh, in Moreland's Nursery, um, succeed. Uh, and um, uh, you know, I have all faith in our council uh, as a whole and our council officers to be able to uh, work with um, you know all landowners around um, you know in this case this development um, to make sure that uh, any impacts are, are minimal and, and mitigated as best as they can. We've got a track record doing this, and I'm sure we'll continue to do that into the future. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, I really look forward to this project coming to fruition, and that they have all the success uh, that they uh, they can have. Okay, then on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour. Yes. Uh, all those against, um, uh, seven one. If I can call for a division. Okay, seventeen point one. <coughs> Review into health of the region's bottle trees. Um, I would like to move that a report be prepared for an upcoming council meeting about best practice for bottle trees in the urban environment and the effect of bitumen or concrete in close proximity. We have a second, uh, Councillor Burkett. Um, I'll speak to it. This is, um, <clears throat> I believe, about... Um, um, I believe that, uh, yeah, if you look at some of the health and talking to people that have looked after our bottle trees that have worked for Council in the past, that. Uh, we do have some health issues with our bottle trees and I do think we um, can create innovation in the Maranoa and look at what's best for the bottle trees. I do think the environment has changed where we now in you know the last 20, 20 years or 30 years use a lot more bitumen. We sometimes even put bark on top of bottle trees. We do some things that perhaps are not best practice and I think we need to get a report back on investigating and what makes healthy bottle trees and how can we change our practices to do that. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? I've just got a question. Can I ask a question? Yep, okay. please go ahead, Councillor O'Neill. Um, my question was what, what triggered this, just to give it context? Uh, just the health of some of the bottle trees in town. Um, 
And we've got extremely healthy bottle trees, but they've got a different dynamic around the tree. Um, yeah, uh, Councillor Taylor. Oh, mine just, I was just thinking, wouldn't this be more of an operational thing? Um, you know, this is part of the beautification of the town. Like, does it really have to come to council for something like this? Well, we set the strategic direction, so that's why, um, you know, we can make a report about something and to have a look at it. Uh, Councillor Burkett? Uh, can we add in there probably about also wet areas? Um, I noticed, say, Mitchell over the years, where they've been planted, where there's irrigation, the, the water's actually killed them uh, yeah. in the Memorial Park. But I, I see them every day, damage like in the main street of Mitchell, where they, and in the past they've tried to fix them in different ways, and it, we need to get done professionally not just yeah i'm happy to put in yet. there happy to put in there including um lawn areas like just to add, yep yeah i'm happy with what you said but i just put in a cr last week and i'm just going to try and find it for the main or one of the main volunteers at Wallambilla cemetery and the problem down there i can't think of what it is but i was going to um there's something growing on the trees now it can be Mm, there's um, numerous things eh? on the bottle trees. Yeah, it's like uh, I think it's mistletoe. Well, is I it like mistletoe? I know that was brought up by yeah, one. Yeah. But anyway, whatever it was, I put it in for Jimmy Klein, and um, they were going to start doing it. But they're gonna, mm. I reckon some of the ones around town were getting. Um, yeah, mistletoe is one where it just sort of is a bit like a leech on the tree and yeah, just grows, it grows on it. Yeah. Kill a lot of. Yeah, I think it was, but anyway, whatever it was. Um, look, some councils, through the chair, some councils ought to have a, a tree audit. Um, they actually work out where their valuable trees are and they treat them like their assets and, and mm -hmm. document them and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, keep an annual audit on them. Um, certainly, depending on, you know, how important you see your bottle trees mm -hmm. being is that you could do that in parts of the town. Mm -hmm. But So it's, it's not just <coughs> an operational issue. It mm -hmm. can be treated as an asset issue. Because we used to have an arborist. Um, when Corey worked for council, he was a qualified arborist. Yeah, well, I don't know if we've got a qualified arborist I mean, on staff now. hard to get these well, days. In, yeah. mm. yeah. you know, in discussions we're having, there's a bottle tree on the corner of Crystal and Quinton Street, just over the railway line, and you can still see it where... Um, what's his name? John... Um, what was his name? The carpenter. Um, anyway... His father-in-law's house was being sold now, of course, but where he cleaned the inside completely out of the rot and had just screw the bark room inside and out. It's just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dennis Higgins. Higgins. Dennis Higgins. Dennis Higgins. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about Dennis Higgins. Yeah. yeah. Well, they also, mm. over the years, you've space invaded. Like the one out in front of Nutrien's got a big whole same thing, but they've used different things, but a lot of it's not from a professional either. Yeah. So I'm uh, happy to put in there... Um, in the trees and, and the effects on bitumen concrete, including uh, wet areas, i.e., mm. like irrigated lawns. lawns. They've got more of a chance growing near the bitumen than they do in the mm. yeah. Yeah. That, That'll roll them. Yeah, but there's a lot dying. Like, But this time of year, you start to think you're losing them, but this is where they can look the worst and they do bounce back. Yeah, quickly. like so a lot of them now have dropped all their leaves, leaves and they've got all new and they look brown. Yeah. And they're just coming good because they've got that many new I shoots. a few questions on Roma Gardeners, you know. Mm. I think the spring sort of, because it was a lot long, spring has yeah. changed a bit of stuff. It's the second are happy with that change. Is it me? Yeah, more than happy. Very good. Okay. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Uh, oh. Then we'll go to the vote. Oh. Oh, I'll just say um, I think it's a really good idea because um, bottle trees are um, a big part of Roma and... Um, um, if we get professional advice, we know that we are doing the right thing by the tree. Mm. Okay, does anyone else wish to? I just have a question. Please go ahead. This is for the region, but not just for Rome, isn't it? Because there's bottle trees all through the region. Yeah, no, um, I'm happy to have it for the region, but obviously Rome has probably it, the Heroes Avenue and, and other things, um, but obviously that advice can be for the whole region. Oh, yeah, the heading says review into health of the region's bottle trees. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Does anyone else wish to speak? Oh, just, just on that, I know Mitchell had two significant icons, I suppose, when I was growing up, the bottle tree hill, and uh, that bottle tree's since gone and they've replanted. And then the tree of knowledge was a bottle tree. Uh, I did suggest we put a 
a steel fabricated one there so we don't have to worry because it is a lot of cost getting them in and then planning them and all that sort of stuff. So, But they are significant to the whole region. So, mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anyone else wish to speak? I'll sum up. I think this is crucially important. Um, as I said, I was talking to uh, one council staff, the former council staff, and they said the best environment for a bottle tree is where there's no grass, just dirt, and they thrive. And we've got environments that are completely the opposite to that. And I believe in the older days, uh, when I was a kid, they didn't even have much bitumen around them uh, because they wouldn't have bitumen everywhere. So now, We've got situations, we do developments, and we have no breathing space for them to get any moisture. Um, that we even put concrete around them. So I think if we know what's the best, we can head to that. Uh, and also on that note, council has a nursery of bottle trees that we grow. Um, so, you know, there's benefits in learning about this and really seeing and noticing what flourishes and what doesn't and how we can change our practices and designs. Okay, so on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. 0 um, 17.2, Arthur Street, Roma Amenities. I'd like to move that a report be prepared for an upcoming council meeting about the possible ventilation options at the Arthur Street Roma amenity block to address the odour and airflow issues within the building. Um, with, and I'll even put in the thing, with opportunities to remove um, uh, Besser bricks or um, to allow for airflow. And um, also, better cleaning, um, well I've got it in the report that we're actually saying, actually talk to the cleaners, so I just have um, to allow for airflow and feedback about better cleaning options to remove, remove the odour from this uh, toilet block. Uh, do we have a seconder for that one? Councillor McMullen, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. <coughs> Eight zero. Uh, request for support for pump and engine project in Surat. Oh, yeah. This is a late one. Did it come? Yeah. Has anyone got no, it? Must be separate paper. Is it separate? Yes. Yeah. Or maybe. But we're. It was well, in what the about L1? L1 is next then. Maybe it hasn't been done yet. This one here. L, that it's L3. L3. But we it? haven't done L1 or L2. Yeah, yeah right, okay. I've just got it. I, I didn't know whether it come off the original oh. or not. So it's off the late, eh? Okay, so we'll go to L1 then. Mm -hmm. L1 Southwest Rock Initiative Queensland Pub Choir. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. I'll, uh, I'll move um, after I ask a question. Please go ahead. Just with this, um, and it, it looks good to me, but we're being asked to contribute Sixteen and a half thousand dollars, and I recognise that it's obviously scaled because of population and budget mm. and whatever. In here, it's got the cost of uh, what they'll charge. Um, through the chair, I think it was about seventy thousand across. No, no. In terms of, um, it may not be in here. Yeah, pay. Might be in the proposal. I've read it sixty dollars, isn't it? That people are going to. Yes. Oh no! Through the chair, um, what that is is that um, in um, you know in discussion at the Rock, um, the the sixteen and a half thousand is re representing what the contribution would be. But there's the ability for the event to actually charge ticketing. So, for argument's sake, if you charged a ticketing price of sixty dollars it would reduce the the end result of the contribution to council to reduce it by half. Does but that make sense? We did 16 and a half thousand. If we 
uh, contributed six and a half. Support six and a half. We could actually offer this for free. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So we can talk about that later, whether there's that's a right. cost or, or yes. Or I, I'll, I'm happy to move. Yes. Oh, I have another question. Oh, yeah. Councillor Hancock. Uh, so um, if we, I'm just trying to see, is there a date when they're thinking about this? Um, yes. It, um, there's there's actually two dates they're talking about because they originally talked about the September um, 2023. Um, in discussion with the organisers, they wanted to bring it back to April 2023 and the group said, look, that's a real problem for all of us. We've all got events on, et cetera, in relation to that. So they're currently... Um, going back to the group to look at either late May or um, very early October. Right, so on the back of that, if it's late May, mm. we're taking this out of this year's sponsorship money, so $16,500. So I'm just wondering after we take sixteen, if this goes through a day and we take $16,500 out of our sponsorship budget, how much will be left in our sponsorship yeah. budget? Oh. Because that's a fair... Can you? Great. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect That's timing. You came in. Mate, oh, sorry, mm. uh, I may right. have missed the question, but it was what the budget. Yeah, current what the budget. balance is. Yeah. What the balance, balance of the yes. sponsorship yeah. budget is um, uh, if we take this out. Mm. Um, so minus the one thousand dollars that council just approved, um, the latest figure I had taking that into account would be twenty seven, twenty seven thousand three hundred dollars. That's after is the it? sixteen and a half's out as well. I'm no, sorry. that would be no, before. That, that's a twenty before. to take the sixteen and a half yeah. out. The yeah. current budget I had is twenty eight three hundred. You've just approved a thousand dollars, so okay. twenty seven mm -hmm. three hundred is the current <coughs> balance. Um, and we do note the question of the timing, yeah. which you're right. You know, around if it's mm. this year, it'll be that money. Obviously, if it's the next one each year, it'll be a different. So if we approve this today, we'll have about eleven thousand dollars left to do the last six months of the year. Mm. Yeah, unless you put like send it to the quarterly review as part of the motion, you could thank, do that. Thank you, Director Day. It's so, up to the mover. So I just, um, I mean, you've been at the meetings, obviously, Mayor. Um, are every, all the or, or in, is everyone else supportive of this? Um, there's, I think, there's four councils that are firm out of the six, and the other two are tentatives. And we were tentative or firm. Um, we were tentative, waiting for. Um, we, yeah. So it'll be fine. Okay. And so I just wonder, can we? It, what was sorry? I got one more question. Mm -hmm. that I'm happy to move. And but, um, um, were others happy with May or or more October? Because I um, the, the majority of the discussion was that um, I, I think there was Peru was happy with um, May. Why? Simply because they have their their tourism population there, and come um, the, even October. Um, people have moved out of the west because it's already getting hot. Um, that said, the majority of the group were discussing um, th that, you know, very late September, that first week in October was better for the majority of the group. Because I just think, um, given recent debates that we've had on another event and mm. they're stipulating May, we've got the population to make this work, not, mm. not have people come in. So mm. can we... Um, I might embed that we advocate for October there, late September, mm. early October. Mm. Yeah, all right. Mm. Yeah, but th this is really about actually getting everyone on board to bring them to the region. Mm. So that's why everyone's got to be involved with it, you know. But if we can also put some guidelines yeah, yeah. as what that is. No, but I'm just saying that's what it's really yeah. about. You know, and we, get, in we could... Um, now, council yeah. lab... We could actually make um, a bit of money out of it, plus... Um, I was talking to Murway uh, Mayor, and um, they're all quite excited about it, really. Yeah, and Murway's done it before, yeah. haven't they? I yes, they have, and they so said um, good. Mayor Anthony said it was very, very good and worth every cent. Yeah, Councillor O'Neill, I'll move then. Um, go ahead. Does oh. the officer I just um, through the chair just before you do move? Or just to qualify, um, we think that balance might not be quite right. Yeah, and so. Um, at the risk of you, um, if I could maybe ask you to um, lay on the table or postpone for a moment. I just want to clarify, there is the, at the last meeting, the $10,000 for in June Pinaroo, and I'm not, I can't put my hand on my heart and say that that's in that number just oh, right yeah, this yeah. moment, so I'm sorry. We could just push this to the, um, 
Look, I could move and we consider the budget of the quarterly yeah, review. Yeah, that's right. Like yeah, that yeah, way we keep going. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I just didn't want to mislead no, council no, no, and I've taken it, but I'm not know. certain about it, so I just thought... Mm. Does the LDO want to say something? Mm. Oh, no, just you pointing. I thought you might have picked up on something. We're trying to clarify, but I just, rather than rushing yeah. the matter, I'd just rather... Well, I'll, I'll move then. One, uh, the council endorse the Marino Regional Council contribution of 16500 to the Queensland Pub mm -hmm. Choir Initiative to be held in the Maranoa during 2023. Uh, or is it in give in principal support? We can't endorse that today if it's going to. That council give in principal support of Maranoa Regional Council's um, no. commitment to the Queensland Pub Choir Initiative and that this be further considered at the next quarterly review. Um, just through the chair, I think they need to lock the councils in um, in order to be able to negotiate um, them to come out. It's a package deal. So Before is there... Christmas needs to be, they need an answer? Yes, that's right. To well, lock them to come. So why don't, you know... Well, no, base, I'll, I'll move this lays on the table until later in the meeting when we can get the... Um, advice from the staff around the sponsorship budget. Right, all those in favour? Yes. Uh, eight zero. Did you hear that? Uh, L2, bitumen reseal program 22-23. Do we have a mover? McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that council select one, select Oztec Spray Seal Petrite Limited as a recommended tender for tender 23013, Bitumen Reseal Program 2022-23. Authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into final negotiations with Oztec Spray Seal Petrite Limited, noting a contract sum value of $1,798,364, exclusive of GST, and execute the contract if the final terms are acceptable. Three, authorise the nominated superintendent for council, the delegation to order variations up to the value of the approved budget, noting the nature of the contract and the variability associated with the bitumen seal design process. Mm -hmm. And four, assign expenditure to, to the 2022-23 budget allocation for the Rural Road and Urban Street Annual Bitumen Reseal Program. Well, we have a second to Councillor Guthrie. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8 0. Mm -hmm. L3, request for support for pump and engine project in Surat. Uh, Councillor Ladbrook. I'd like to move that council receive a note to request for support for developing tourist um, attraction featuring original machinery. And would the mover be happy to put uh, by providing in principle support? Yes, that'd uh, be to very work good. With the author of the report. Yep, that'd be very good. That's you. Sorry, so work with you. Uh, no, no, the no. sorry the. the with the uh, request the letter, applicant the yeah. the applicant of the yeah letter. from the um, yeah, yeah that'll be the uh, author of the letter i don't understand what that means to provide in principle support to work with you well it means that our staff would work with the author of the letter to progress it and then it would come back to council so is that in principle support or yeah, isn't that in, just telling no in principle support that we want to do it and then we'll have to come and work out how to do mm. it. There's a few moving parts in it. You know? Yes. I get what Councillor Hancock's saying. By where that is, it says we're providing in principle support just to work with the author. We're saying it's OK to work with the author, not actually giving in principle support to developing a tourism attraction. Right, I provide so, in principle. So, um, through the Chair, could I suggest um, by providing in principle support to progress the initiative, and it's do you want to get if you want a further with a further report to be brought yeah, back to council? That makes more sense. sense. Yep, that'd be good. You're happy with that, yes, I Mover? Am. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We get it up there, Mr. Mayor. Yep, I'll speak to it. Hmm. Well, is everyone happy yeah, with the motion? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I. Do support this um, 
Who was the second? I am. Oh, sorry. I did not up there and I didn't hear. That's right. Yeah. I do support looking into um, this project and supporting this as a uh, as a tourist um, little precinct along the river. Um, um, uh, Ray has contacted me and spoke to me about this project um, and the history um, of the um, pumps and diesel en uh, engine that um, gave the water to the Surratt Hospital. So um, I am really think this is an exciting project and I think it mm. also will add value um, to another um, bit of information and, and historical town information along the river walk. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? I'd just like to thank um, uh, Ray for raising this and um, obviously uh, I don't think we keep enough of our history. I think that's why also people visit the region to see about our past and our future. So I really thank him for bringing this to our attention and hopefully council can work together if this motion is um, uh, passed for the benefit of history uh, in the future. Uh, does anyone else, does the move wish to sum up? No. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8-0. L4, air conditioning replacement in June Memorial Hall. Councillor Guthrie. I'd like to move that Council 1 engage a suitably qualified contractor to supply and install two replacement air conditioners at the Injun Memorial Hall and two, approve expenditure of up to $40,000 excluding GST from work order 23546, the Regional Hall Program 2022-2023. I just have a question. Please go ahead. I just see um, like 40 grand for um, two replacement air conditioners. Is that a bit steep or not? They're big ones. Very big They're hall. massive big ones. Very it's big, big hall. hall. Yeah. But there's a few others there, isn't there? There's, um, it says there, there's, okay. Through so the that's chair. what yeah, we there's, need? For there's the six hall? in total. Yeah. Um, the two that have failed, one is at, at the stage yeah. and one is at the back. Um, they're t 20 kilowatt units, so they are yeah. quite sizable. Um, the indicative cost to replace from a, a local supplier, um, they did offer us a price a couple of years back and it was around $15,000 per unit. So that figure uh, just allows us to go ahead and progress the procurement process, um, but obviously caps what we'll, we'll spend. So hopefully we'll bring it in under that. It's just a matter of yeah. just to, so we can get rolling. Yep. And um, do you have a plan in the meantime to actually when you need it for community use that to actually like start them 12 hours earlier and bring the temperature down? Yep, absolutely. So we, we start them earlier. We've got signage that goes over the control panel that yes, sort of says, you know, we're aware they're on um, and yeah, mm -hmm. it does cool it down but it, you know, it would be significant power and whatnot. Yeah. So. so we still have use at the moment. Um, it's just, yeah, if we can progress with this, we'll, Today we will start that procurement process and not lose time over this Christmas break getting that happening. Uh, Councillor McMullen. Yeah, Mr. I was just going to second the motion. Mr. Yeah, that's uh, Councillor McMullen seconding the motion. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Guthrie. I was going to say that the hall gets um, used on a very regular basis and if we can make it as, as comfortable as possible for patronage I think that that's a, um, a very desirable thing. Right, anyone else wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Okay. Um, that, righto, we'll uh, be back at, uh, we'll adjourn the meeting and we'll be back. Um, Councillor Taylor, you're online. I am. Okay, L5, commercial. L1. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. So, L1. Uh, so, Councillor O'Neill, I think you moved yep. that. We have started, yes. I'll move that Council 1 give in principle support of Marino Regional Council. No, I won't. I'll endorse the Marino Regional Council's contribution of 16500 to the Queensland Pub Choir Initiative to be held in the Maranoa during 2023 
allocate these monies from the sponsorship, sponsorship budget um, GL2 887 uh, three, acknowledge that there, there may be ability to reduce the burden of cost through a ticketed event. Uh, four, advocate to hold uh, the event in late September, early October. And five, um, ensure the promotion of our town's choirs uh, are included in the event. Okay. Um, do we have a second now? Councillor McMullen, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? I'll speak. Um, on face value, this looks like uh, a, a good event to bring to the region. Um, it, uh, it seems to have, uh, as has been already shared, support across the, the broader southwest um, councils, uh, and uh, that is clearly driving the overall cost down. Um, I've included the promotion of uh, our uh, choirs in our towns because I was approached by um, one of the um, leaders of one of the choirs in town who saw this on the agenda um, and um, uh, recognised that there's an opportunity to uh, promote the fact that if um, uh, there are community members that wish to um, continue singing after the pub choir event that there are uh, opportunities to do that through uh, a couple of our local choirs. So I think that's important that we have a a local um, uh, flavour to it, uh, and that's why I've included that last um, that last dot point. Um, uh, additionally, I, I think we do need to indicate uh, our position as to when it would be best to be um, uh, hosted uh, through through the Maranoa. Uh, the earlier time frame of, of May will be a bit problematic with other major um, you know annual events happening in that period. So if we can stress the fact that um, whilst we support it. A later, um, a, a, you know, time in the year would be uh, the best uh, for us. Um, but, but overall, I think um, our community will be excited uh, to uh, to be involved. Uh, just getting the wording there. What did you have for point five? Oh, sorry. Uh, ensure that um, uh, throughout the pub choir event, um, uh, our uh, local and regional <coughs> choirs are promoted. Promote, promote them. Say, say it's on Tuesday at the blah blah. Is that what you're? That's saying? right. Yeah. To, to uh, the point I made that um, if someone wants to keep singing and they want an opportunity to do it, mm. this is how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is the second happy with that? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Right. Does um, anyone else wish to speak to the uh, motion? Then we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, eight zero. Okay, moving on to L five. Is it? Yeah. Yep. L five. Commercial use of local government controlled area. Request to set up a stall. We have a mover. Council Ladd. Um, I'd like to move this. Council approve the request to set up a commercial stall in Roma Sale Yards, in accordance with the hire of Roma Sale Yards policy. Number two, authorise the chief executive or delegate to nominate appropriate terms and conditions. Uh, we have a second, Councillor McMullen. Um, is there any uh, one, which one? Does anyone wish to speak? Then we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? <coughs> yes. Okay, eight zero. Uh, L6, Audit Committee, Roma. I'd like to move the Council receive and note the unconfirmed minutes of the Audit Committee meeting held on the 5th of December 2022. Do we have a second now? Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? I've got a question. Please go ahead. Just on page um, 33, it, um, it references that the... Um, uh, and you know, a, a terms of reference was uh, discussed, and it's recommended the council for adoption. Is that coming um, as amended? Is that coming to our January council meeting? Mm. Yes, if I could, if I could respond. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, there were a couple of uh, changes that were uh, um, recommended at the uh, uh, at the, the meeting. 
the draft of those changes has gone back to the chairman and uh, uh, just waiting for his to response, which will then come through to council for them to approve. Uh, all they're doing is endorsing it and making recommendations around what that, those changes will be. And the only other um, question is um, for 2023, um, could the um, dates of the meeting be circulated to other councillors that might be able to attend as observers? Yes. yes. That'll be great. Thank you. Yep. Okay, does anyone, oh, Councillor Hancock? Yeah, I have a question uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Just um, wondering, does the audit, is there a risk matrix that the uh, audit committee uses for Ooh. the risks of council? I just, we, That's a very we just attended our, our financial planning um, course recently and they pointed out the fact that, um, you know, there should be a risk matrix and if so, I'll, I'd, if I'd be able to, That's if council could be supplied that. Um, it's a, what you, I think they're probably talking about is the enterprise risk. Yes, yeah. yes. So there's, uh, that's a fairly large piece of, uh, of, uh, of a topic to actually talk about. Uh, we do have an enterprise risk policy uh, at, at an organisational level and we also have a fraud policy. Both of those have uh, some guidelines around and the fraud actually has a whole, uh, a, a whole plan behind it which also has some guidelines. Sitting underneath those guidelines includes uh, basically risk registers of which uh, we um, we do have one, but it hasn't been reviewed for quite some time. In order to rate our risks, we use a risk matrix, and I'm happy to circulate what mm -hmm. those risk, that risk matrix is. Yep. Identifies whether they're a low risk, a high risk, uh, extreme, mm -hmm. and moderate. They're the, they're the risk uh, levels that we've got. Um, as part of that risk register, we have what we identify as the risk, then we take into account any mitigation circumstances that we can to mitigate those risks, and then we re-rate those risks. So, and the review of the risk, the enterprise risk framework um, is actually part of the internal audit committee work plan. Yes, that um, because it needs some work, and yep. um, hence um, there's a number of uh, it, uh, internal audit um, rep um, reports will be developed over the year. Yep. The next one coming is the fraud um, internal audit report. Um, That's we correct. are looking at enterprise risk um, next year, uh, as well next as year. Yep. as well as we're discussing cyber security, cyber security is mm. scheduled for next year. But we're yep. just discussing whether we pull that forward based on some of the um, corporate failures that we've seen in recent weeks. Really. So at um, the audit committee meetings, do you talk, does the committee talk about risks? Yeah, so as part of the work plan that got submitted at the, the uh, at this current uh, meeting, there's a, the, the work plan identified a review of the enterprise risk register uh, throughout the year. Uh, what we did uh, discuss was uh, it won't be achievable by March, but it will be achievable by, by approximately the June meeting. So we're committing to make sure it goes to the June meeting. Uh, what they do want to do is uh, review that on a biannual basis uh, as part of the work plan. How, do, how can um, councillors get a copy of the risks that are, are tabled at the audit committee meetings, just so we're aware of the risk. It, it, does, it doesn't get tabled like that. Um, uh, as in a register, there's, the organisation actually uses a register to work through those kind of things. From a board perspective, you're looking at the strategic risk um, framework that you work in. Um, and it, it, the activity of that internal, of that audit, committee is actually around strategic risk. So um, you're looking at a range of statutory documents on a regular basis every year to make sure that you're looking at what's um, important from a, a compliance perspective. But the internal audit work plan, plan and the, um, the audit committee work plan are actually designed to look at areas of strategic risk um, that it considers are critical to the organisation. They might be material or they might be um, responding to a particular incident or event that's actually happened inside the organisation. So um, it's really about, well, okay, um, what is it you're trying to understand in that space? Certainly I know that the council itself has talked about having maybe a workshop around strategic <coughs> risk um, with fantastic. our insurers. Um, so that, um, and certainly as you go to develop a new corporate plan, that's a really good process yep. to do that yep. is to um, to have a look at that what, where is your strategic risk yeah and I, I just think that we should know yeah. that as yep. you know as councillors around the table mm -hmm. we should know what those strategic risks are yeah so, yeah thank you
All right. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Okay. Righto. Moving on to. Is there any others we had to come back to? No, not this no. meeting. We're all good at the moment. Righto. Then we move into closed. Someone moves into closed. Mr. Mayor, I've got some conflicts to the Please go ahead. Um, <coughs> I'd like to declare a conflict of interest for C6. The description is application for permanent road closure. Road adjacent to lot 206 WV1262. The declaring councillor is myself. The person with the interest is myself. The particulars of the interest is the nature of the conflict is a long-term personal friendship with the applicant and his extended family. The type of conflict is that it's a declarable conflict of interest and I will choose to leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Okay. Uh, any other I have, conflicts? I have another two. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, the, the next one is for C9. It's a request for additional concession on rates for loss of capping for 15020357. The declaring councillor is myself, Councillor Julie Guthrie. The person or the related party with the interest is Guthrie Pastoral Group, which consists of myself, my husband Ross Guthrie and my son Nick Guthrie. The particulars of the interest is that the nature of the conflict is that a request for a review of rate assessments has previously been submitted for Guthrie Pastoral Group. So a reasonable person might think that a bias may prevail if I participate in the discussions or the voting on this particular matter. The type of the conflict is a declarable conflict of interest and the action is that I will leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Next one is exactly the same. It's for C10. Request for additional concession on rates for loss of capping. It is for 15020548. Declaring councillor is myself, Councillor Julie Guthrie. The related party is Guthrie Pastoral Group, which consists of myself, my husband, Ross Guthrie, and my son, Nick Guthrie. Particulars of interest is that the nature of the conflict is that a request for review of rate assessments has previously been submitted for Guthrie Pastoral Group. So a reasonable person might think that a bias may prevail if I participate in discussions and the voting on this particular matter. So I will, uh, as a declarable conflict of interest, I will choose to leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Okay, um, any other conflicts? Mm -hmm. Councillor Ladbrook. Uh, <coughs> The item number is LC5. Description is um, Brownie and Guide Hut, um, 41 Arthur Street, um, Roma. Declaring councillor is myself, Councillor Ladbrook. The person with the interest and related party is my wife, Alana. Um, particulars of interest, my wife is president of the Roma Show Society. This organisation has put forward a request for council consideration type of conflict is a prescribable, prescribable um, conflict of interest and the action I'll take is leave the room while the matter is being discussed and voted on. Okay, any other conflicts? Right, do we have someone to move into closed? Councillor O'Neill. To move in accordance with the provisions of section 254J3 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the Council resolved to close the meeting to the public to discuss confidential uh, items that its councillors consider is necessary to close the meeting. In accordance with section 254J5 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the following table provides the matters to be discussed and an overview of what is to be discussed while the meeting is closed. C1 is 2022-23 Project Budget Amendments, Capital Works Project Fencing at Gallus Box Park, Roma. C2 is Endorsement of Transport Development Scheme TIDS Work Program 2023-24 to 26-27. C3 is 2022-23 Proposed Amendment to Capital Project Muggan Plain Bridge Project. C4 is Roma Pump Track Tender Consideration Plan. C5 is Acquisition of Historic Asset. C6 is application for permanent road closure road adjacent to lot 206 WB1262. C7 is disposable, dis, dis, 
disposable disposal of land bent and caught in June. Uh, C8 is APLNG livability grants round 1 23. C9 is request for additional concession of rates for loss of capping 1502035 C10 is request for additional concession of rates for loss of capping 1502048. C11 is request to commence legal proceedings against custom for unpaid natural gas. Debt 5002166. C12 is development infrastructure charges approval reference 20141908. C13 request to purchase land lot 124 on EG247 Surat. C14236 Edward Street North Framer. C15 Burundi Action Group Incorporated Contract. C16 Infrastructure Agreement Reference 2022-20658. C17 Chief Executive Officer Recruitment. LC1 2023 um, Australia Day Awards. LC2 Minor Organisational Structure Amendments. LC3 Submission to the Department of CHDE Divestment of um, Housing Stock January 2023. LC4 Southwest Rock Initiative Outback Cars Proposal. LC5 um, Brownie and Guide Hut, 41 Arthur Street, Raymond. Okay, do we have a second up? <coughs> Councillor Burkett. Um, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8-0. Um, righto. Um, um, CEO, did you want to um, say anything or uh, you don't need to declare a conflict or anything? Um, uh, yes, I would like to declare a conflict on C17. I am an applicant in that process. Okay, thank and, you. And um, uh, the Director of Roma will take my um, position um, here to support and facilitate that process with Council. Righto, thank you. Okay. Um, well, um, just someone to move back in the close. I'll move again to close, Kel. Yeah, we have a seconder, Councillor McMullen. All those in favour? Yes. Okay, 8 0. with the meeting. I'd like to move that C17 Chief Executive Officer Recruitment is dealt with next. Uh, do we have a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Burkett. All those in favour? Yes. All those against? Yeah, sorry. Okay. So, no, Councillor... Yes, yes, yes sorry, thank you. Okay. All those against? Uh, Councillor Hancock, <laughs> it's a long day. Um, so that's 8-1 if I'm called for division. Okay, uh, C-17, Chief Executive Officer Recruitment. I'd like to move that Council, one, receive and note the report and accomp accompanying documentation. Two, endorse the following documentation, including amendments as presented. A, selection report which details uh, one, the recruitment actions from stage one and stage two of the recruitment process detailed in the council resolution dated 26th of October 2022. Two, the candidate suitability summaries. And three, the subcommittee's recommendation on the preferred candidate for the position of chief executive officer for the full uh, council selection. Uh, B, um, contract of employment template. Uh, C, chief executive office, officer position description. D, chief executive officer performance agreement, including amendment two to clause 3.6. E, completed assessment materials including one, the candidate shortlisting methodology for the full applicant pool. Two, interview guides for five shortlisted applicants. And three, the reference check, check materials for the final three highest ranking candidates. 
Um, and we'll just adjourn for a second. We'll keep going with the meeting. Uh, number three, offer to appoint the subcommittee preferred candidate for chief executive officer as outlined in the selection report. Uh, four, authorise the mayor to negotiate negotiate the final terms and conditions including making any amendments relevant to the selected candidate relevant to the selected candidate having regard to whether the selected candidate is currently employed by council and the terms and conditions of that employment of the contract of employment including the final total remuneration package range for council selected candidate. Five, authorise the mayor on behalf of council to issue a written contract of employment, including the position description and performance agreement to council selected candidate to finalise the appointment of the chief executive officer in accordance with section 194 of the Local Government Act 2009. Six, notify the unsuccessful candidates um, and seven, issue a public statement on the appointment of the Chief Executive Officer. Okay, do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Burkett, um, any opposition? Does the mover wish to speak to the motion? Um, I think this is one of the most comprehensive processes ever undertaken. Um, yeah, all councillors have been involved in um, organising the material, I believe, um, and this process has been a very thorough and professional process and um, I look forward um, for the benefit of the uh, council to conclude this process. Okay, does someone wish to speak against the motion? Councillor Hancock. Yes, please. Oh, well, Councillor Hancock first and then Councillor Taylor. This is the second time that I've been put in the position to um, vote on the employment of a CEO um, from a paper report. And the first time was the appointment of the interim um, CEO and now it's the appointment of the permanent CEO's position where um, I'm expected to make this decision of a paper report. Um, on this basis, I, I don't have the information that I need to make this decision um, because the information that I need to make this decision on behalf of the community is to be able to interview the candidate. Um, I wouldn't employ anybody in my business, um, as Councillor Taylor has previously said. Um, I would employ anyone in my business without interviewing them. Um, so I certainly would not employ anybody um, on the behalf of the community um, without interviewing them. This decision is a critical decision um, for not only council but the community and I just don't, um, because I was not involved with the interview uh, process, um, I don't believe I have the information required to make this decision and on this basis I will be abstaining from voting, which I understand is a vote for no but I'm abstaining because I do not have the information that I require to make this decision on behalf of our community. Okay, does anyone wish to speak for the motion? Councillor Guthrie. I'd like to firstly start by thanking our two HR managers, both Nola Ward, who is now retired, and also Jess Dowie, who stepped in, and who gave us so much valuable support and, and was able to guide us through the process very, very clearly and I really do thank you for your attention to detail and the way that you guided all of those who were involved. And that included legal as well as then the recruitment agency. You held us all together, which is really great. I'd also like to say that with regard to the recruitment process, we did have three stages. We are at the third of the three stages now, which is basically um, the selection, offer and notification. But I think it's really relevant to mention that in the stage one, which was endorsed, there were three people who were tasked as being part of the subcommittee. I was one of those. And I was very mindful of the approval, the resolution that was achieved where we were given the task to develop the candidate shortlisting methodology and interview resources. Each of the councillors, each of my colleagues here, 
were given the invitation, and I know the invitation because I, I issued it, to draft questions that they felt would be um, worth asking any successful uh, interviewed applicant to be able to respond because the crucial thing was actually having questions that were able to then align to the selection criteria. And I would have to say that I felt that I was only a mouthpiece for the council and that when I was then going through, and I'm sure my colleagues who are also on the subcommittee were asking questions, we weren't asking them for our own benefit. We were asking to elicit the responses to then bring back as paper copies, which we've now done, which was the second of the stages, which is the candidate attraction shortlisting, which was undertaken. And we have prepared a selection report detailing the candidate suitability summaries and the supporting assessment materials for the three highest ranking candidates for presentation and consideration by the full council. We were very, very mindful the questions were developed before the actual um, shortlisting occurred. We were very mindful that the questions were such that they were able to then elicit responses by the applicants to enable then the written summaries to be brought back to colleagues to make a decision. I feel that I can say hand on heart that the process was a very tight process. It was a very fair process and I do think um, that it was undertaken with the right intention. So I'm very, very comfortable that each of my colleagues have got a folder and in that folder contains all of the materials that they're able to use to make an assessment. Okay, to summon uh, Councillor Taylor, do you wish to speak against the motion? Yes, please. Please go ahead. I can't vote for this. I didn't vote. Um, it's just, this is just not right. The procedure was not right. Um, the fact that we uh, only had one, we've only got one candidate to vote on. Um, and when I questioned this before, I was told that, no, no, there'll be three. Well, yes, there's three, but you're only putting one up. And it's the whole procedure, um, I don't believe is right. I haven't had any involvement. Yes, I've read everything, but that didn't give me any rights to anything. Um, no, no questions. I couldn't ask any questions. Everything apparently was done confidentially. Confidentially. So, I just, I just feel that it's, it's another decision made that I haven't been a part of. It's something that's going to affect the Maranoa for the next three years, um, and I just don't feel, as Councillor Hancock said, she doesn't feel. I don't feel confident in voting for something that I had no part of, and I don't feel that I should. Um, have a say, or another. Well, no, that's not the right word. I. It's just I just don't feel that this has been adequate. I don't feel part of it. I. I just I just don't feel it's it's um it's right at all. And to say we've had a comprehensive um, reports. Yes, they've been comprehensive. But as as I've said, you can't you can't judge somebody on paper. Um, the other two candidates. I, I, you know, if we could have had them in the room and spoken to them, I would have felt much better about it. But, and I was happy with the subcommittee to bring three to the table, but they only bought one in honesty. So I won't be voting for this. I will vote against it. Thank you. So point of order, Councillor Taylor, I think you're being misleading saying there's only one candidate. Um, there is three candidates and I ask you to uh, retract that uh, that is oh, well, misleading. That's, that's not misleading. You are only you are only putting forward one candidate for me to vote on. You are bringing one candidate to this table for me to vote on. No, well, I do. Yes, uh, that. Well, where's the other two then? Where's the other two names that you're putting forward? In this document, the other two people are in here, but there is only one that I'm putting forward. That's right. Here. I am. I am voting for one person. You didn't give me a choice to vote for anybody else. They you are in not, the. They're in the selection criteria for the three are in here. So that's misleading to no, say. No, it's not. You Are you asking me to vote for, how many people are you asking me to vote for? One, two or three? But if you don't One. vote, if you don't vote for this candidate, but what was brought to the table? It's as if you are saying there is only one candidate brought to council to decide from. There is only one. You're there only is... bringing one candidate to the table. There is three candidates in that. There's event. three candidates that were shortlisted. There's only and one candidate that you're bringing to the table for me to vote on today. In well, the recommendation, you're, you're getting into semantics here, Mayor. Um, anyway, can the the simple fact is.
there is only one in the resolution, but three have been brought to the table and it sounds like you've only got one that you've ever got a choice of and you don't know. And there's three in here that have been uh, taken to council for council to decide. If this motion does not get up, then there would be others that could be tested. I am voting on the person that you have brought to the table today, and that's one person. Well, I would rule that out of order, that there is three that have been brought to the table today. Not to We're the not talking about there. the motion yeah, That's for what council. Councillor Taylor is talking about. Are you talking about the motion, not what's, what you brought I to the am table? Voting ag I, I am voting against this motion. Yeah, that's fine. But how many were brought to council today? How many people were brought to council today? You, you, a subcommittee had three candidates and they brought one to the table for no, me to vote is, on. No, they have. You're talking about the same. Th you are saying the same thing. Yes. Yeah. No, that's misleading. What I'm saying is, chair, that is misleading to say that there is only one brought to this meeting. There's three brought to the meeting, but there's one in this motion, and it's that's a right. Difference. And I am voting. I am voting against this motion. Yeah, on the motion, but you had three brought to the table. Now, um, now, does anyone wish to speak for the motion? Councillor Burkett. Um, Mr Murphy, yeah, firstly, I'd like to also congratulate Jess, Jess and Nola um, for the power of work they've done in this process. And uh, kudos to you on your first big major solo one. Um, I, I think, I know it's been brought up about the selection, uh, interview process, and I... Nine councillors in the process, and I, I know this caused conjecture when we changed our mind, and that's it's happened several times since I've been on council in this chamber on different matters. Um, but I've spoken to just in the regards of how many people you'd have in a selection pro, uh, interview process, and I've spoken to ex CEO, ex councillors, actually a lawyer, but not legally talking to the lawyer, just candidly, business people, and they all said three is enough, nine's too many. So that sort of put me at ease in that respect. There's too many inconsistencies when you've got that amount of people in the room, plus it, the intimidation, intimidation factor and also legal ramifications moving forward. Um, also, we were all included. We all had the process in, in the process. Councillor Guthrie did send us opportunity to have questions put forward if we need in, in part of the process. Um, I think I, try, I had full trust in the process, uh, had full faith in the subcommittee and especially Councillor Guthrie's been through this with her wealth of knowledge with Education Queensland. She's been through all this before. So uh, that's we voted those guys in for full faith and I, I had no trouble. And I, I look forward to working with the new candidate uh, when, it's, when the person's announced, um, whether it's the next three or four years, I'm, I've had full faith in um, this person's ability to take the council to the next step. Thank you. OK, does someone wish to speak against the motion? I'm going to speak. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm not. Um, I'm not going to vote for this or against it. I am. I am going to abstain um, uh, on a on a couple of points um, uh, and how I've come to this. Uh, one originated from uh, the last half an hour. Um, I do think it's wrong uh, that uh, the name of the candidate is not included in the resolution. I think that is um, uh, that isn't. Uh, the right process. I don't believe it's open and transparent and uh, this um, item is on the agenda and there are a lot of people interested in the decision today. Um, having been involved previously with the appointments of CEOs uh, and, um, you know, uh, the appointment of an interim CEO less than 12 months ago uh, where that name was put into the resolution and was out in the public arena immediately, uh, I am... Um, uh, always in favour of open and transparent decisions uh, of uh, this body. Uh, and so uh, I, uh, I am disappointed that that isn't included today. Uh, but um, fundamentally, I'm, I, I am abstaining from today's vote uh, because I um, can't, with all good conscience, say to the community that elected me that I've had the uh, opportunity to do the level of due diligence that's required to make the decision. Um, I haven't seen any of the applications uh, not one application. I've not been able to read an application of any of the people that put themselves forward for this role. And uh, I then wasn't um, afforded the opportunity to interview the candidate. So therefore, um, I, I do not have the right level of um, uh, information 
and, and in my view, um, uh, the due diligence around uh, making what is an incredibly important decision uh, for the leadership of our council. Uh, uh, this, this role uh, is in place to guide uh, the operational aspects of the strategic decisions that we make uh, as an elected council. Uh, and as, as only one decision maker here, um, I, I haven't been afforded the opportunity uh, to uh, put the right rigour around this particular decision, which I am mightily disappointed about. Uh, and I, like Councillor Burkett, have spoken uh, to former um, elected representatives from our area, and they expressed to me that they felt that all nine of us should have been involved. I have extensive experience at a board level in the recruitment of executives um, outside of this organisation, but also in this organisation. Uh, and all of the board has been involved in the interview of uh, the um, you know, uh, shortlisted candidates. Um, uh, my view has always been uh, the CEO is answerable to the number of councillors uh, that the community elects. Uh, and if they can't uh, and, 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 and um, deal with um, an interview that has all nine of us involved, then they're probably not up to the task. Um, now, I make no aspersions uh, on uh, the candidates that have been put forward uh, in this process because they weren't um, uh, afforded the opportunity to be uh, interviewed by all nine. But for me, um, I will be abstaining um, uh, from this vote because I can't uh, go out into the community with all good conscience and say that I have enough information to make a sound, uh, important decision on their behalf. Okay, does anyone wish to speak for the motion? Councillor Ladbrook. Yep, I just want to thank um, Jess and the team for a marvellous job. And um, <clears throat> I think the process that we've had um, is probably smoother than, um, um, you know, uh, any business, any business which council is a business, um, you wouldn't want to in be interviewed by nine people. So, um, and I, uh, I just can't imagine what it'd be like to have nine people in front of you. So I think the three, and we've had a good choice. And um, yeah, thank you. Okay, does um, anyone else wish to speak? Mr. Mayor, I'd just <coughs> like to say a few things. Um, someone, I forget, somebody said there before that I didn't get any questions. Everyone got the questions, they got the copies of the questions that were uh, every candidate was asked. I've spoken with many, quite a few councillors of, well, in Rome, or well, this area, I should say. Early days of the Maranoa, they had a selection panel of four, and there was, I was told by one of the panellists in hindsight that was one was too many. I spoke at different at Cairns, I spoke with a few councils that I knew in different rural areas. Nine is no good, it's not acceptable. The legal advice was don't use nine. We got that in, in when we were talking with them. So um, I, you know, I think we've done the process, uh, the best process we can. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Okay, uh, I'll sum up. Um, yeah, I believe that... Oh, did someone say anything? No, the cop. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, no, I think um, for the general public, have confidence in this is the document after the process. All the information was approved by the full council. Uh, yes, a subcommittee was used to do this. Um, I do believe that uh, this is an extremely professional process and um, I think we've got to, as councillors, focus on getting the most out of this organisation for the benefit of the ratepayers of the region. And the quicker we um, also make a decision, even though we've had a very comprehensive process, um, I'm looking forward to... Um, uh, you know, for the first time for quite a while, having a, um, a full-time, uh, a permanent CEO. And I believe that the uh, organisation needs that and that will provide stability. So I'll be certainly supporting this motion. So on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour?
Councillor Edward Jess. All those against? Against. Okay, um, so if um, Councillor O'Neill and Hancock, are you abstaining, which is in the negative? So that will be 6-3 uh, if I can call for a division. Okay, we'll just um, have a break for a Did second. You move into close. Move move back into I, I move we go into um, closed. Well, I'll second it. Okay, would, would you mind organising the CEO? Um, <coughs> move to go into closed. Was there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Burke, are all those in favour? Yes. Okay, nine zero. So it's uh, one, two, eight zero. C one. We're in open now. No. No, we just we're just really open. We're going to start on some other. We're on C1. C1, we've done a couple of um, LC. LC. Oh, oh, okay, we'll just adjourn for a second. Okay, oh, C1 proposed budget amendments, capital works program, fencing at Gallus Fox Park, Roma. Council McMullen. Uh, Council O'Neill. Um, I've got the black beard. <laughs> uh, I certainly haven't. <laughs> I'll, I'll move the Long council one note the estimated project cost for the chain wire fencing and, and boundary protection netting significantly exceeds the current budget allocation for the project. Two, prioritise the boundary protection netting given the risk reduction of this investment and increase project budget allocation by 26,250 to allow this component of the project to be progressed to construction. Three, allocate the additional funds from energy contracts reserve non-IA. Uh, four, be presented with the chain mesh fencing project and revised costings as part of the 2023-24 budget deliberation for consideration. We have a seconder. Councillor, oh, well, Ladbrook, I, he seems to miss out over there, but uh, <laughs> Councillor Ladbrook. Give, all his life. give me a flag out if you start missing. Um, and uh, does the mover wish to speak to it? Very quickly, just to say that um, I think uh, we need to progress this, um, albeit, you know, not as much as we'd like, but we are progressing it um, because of the, uh, not only of the footy games that are played at Gallus Fox Park uh, annually, uh, but um, the big games that are being brought here um, around the Sandos Rugby event, I think as, as um, best we can, we should uh, um, chip away at uh, improving this particular asset of our community, uh, given that uh, there are major companies investing a lot of money into bring, bringing in um, you know, big, big games to our region. So I think this is a step in the right direction. And just quickly also, just the safety aspect is not only for those guys, but the junior rugby league that play there, fetching balls off the street. So this will be a... It's a good safety thing as well. Yeah. And I'd just like to say, um, I, I believe hopefully we can do it more cost effectively and there's other options I'm sure the officers will look at. Uh, but the safety is a big concern. It's a very busy highway. And I think if we can do that, it'll be a win-win for everyone. So, um, as well as improving the facility. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the movie wish to sum up? Nothing more to say. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Anybody online? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, yes. So you're both in favour, so that's 9-0. We'll just swap out. Yeah, that'd okay. be fine. That'd be a good time to do that. Okay, C2, Endorsement of Transport Development uh, Scheme, TIDS Works, Program 2023 to 2024 to 2026 to 2027. Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that, let it read off the board in case, that Council 1 receive and note the report and endorse the proposed Transport Inf Infrastructure Development Scheme, TIDS Work Program, noting the 2023-24 council contribution amount of 1,633,500 to provide 
preliminary commitment to funding the con contribution required for the 2024-25, 2025-26 and 2026-27 programs, $1,633,500, $1,633,500, $1,633,500 respectively, subject to annual, re annual review as part of the future budget deliberations. Three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign the project scope forms for pro projects on the program. Okay, we have a second to Councillor Hancock. And is that part as the resolution? That's as the resolution, is it? That's uh, what I read it off. Yeah, no, but yeah. it's part of the, as, as, the res, as per the resolution. Okay, does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. 9 0. C3, 2022-23 proposed amendment to capital projects, Mug Muggins Lane Bridge project. Councillor uh, Burkett. I'd like to move that Council 1 receive and note this report by way of update to the Muggins Lane Bridge replacement project. Two, approve a request for variation application to the Australian Government's Bridge Renewal Program to amend the scope of the project from replace Muggins Lane Bridge with concrete or steel to replace Muggins Lane Bridge with like-for-like like timber components. And three, conditional on approval of the above variation from the Australian Government, A, award the contract for the refurbishment of Muggins Lane Bridge to Timber Restoration Systems Proprietary Limited, pursuant to section 235B of the Local Government Regulation 2012, B, authorise Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to finalise contract negotiations with Timber Restoration Systems Proprietary Limited and execute the contract. We have a second, Councillor Guthrie. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Nine zero. Okay. Um, C four Roma pump track tender consideration plan. Councillor Hancock. I move that Council One resolve in accordance with Section two three zero of the Local Government Regulation twenty twelve to adopt a tender consideration plan for construction of the Roma. Pump track project to engage World Trail, engage World Trail PTY Ltd to construct the pump track component of the detailed design for a contract value of five hundred fourteen thousand five hundred and four dollars and sixty cents ex GST. Three, be presented with a subsequent report detailing options on how to fund the remaining components of the pump track project, including both critical and non-critical components. Do we have a seconder? I second that. Oh, uh, well, um, yeah, Councillor Taylor, uh, we'll go uh, with that. Um, Councillor Labrook was first, but he said, pass it on to you, so that's great. Now, um, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Yeah. Councillor Hancock. Uh, yep, thank you. Uh, this is really exciting um, for the youth of uh, our community. I was at a um, youth uh, function the other day and um, the uh, skate park and pump track come up and they are waiting with anticipation for this to be done. And um, I am um, very excited about it and I think the community will receive it really well. So I'll be looking forward to it being completed. Okay, Councillor Ladbrook. I just want to endorse what um, Councillor Han Hancock said. And I think the more um, we get um, grounds and playgrounds and all that for the young ones, the better, the better it is. Okay, uh, I'll speak. I'm worried that some of these kids are going to be growing up before we get it because there's such delays on getting uh, things done. But I think this one is going to be worth waiting for because it sounds like we've got some of the best people in Australia actually doing this. Um, and you can generally tell the difference if they know what they're doing. And I think the kids will definitely be able to tell the difference. So I'm looking forward to um, this is um, getting underway. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? Yeah. Could I speak? Yeah, please go ahead. I too would just like to say I'm so pleased that this is going ahead. And i also like to thank De Deputy Director Cam for all his hard work and um, and all the times he's you know been up there with the kids and found out what they wanted. So. Really pleased that we're actually going to turn some soil on this. Okay, 
Um, then we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. 9-0. Uh, C5, ac acquisition of historic asset. I'd like to move that this lay on the table um, till Council has a briefing on this um, and then be dealt with at a future meeting. Uh, all those in favour? Yes. Yes. All those against? Uh, seven two. If I can call for a division. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move a motion uh, that we um, uh, move this item from the closed agenda to the open uh, agenda and um, uh, release the name of what the historic asset is to the general public. Okay. Do you have a do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Hancock, do you want to speak to the motion? I do. Um, I, I think uh, for uh, the interests of uh, open and transparent decision making of this council, uh, that uh, for 12 months now uh, an item has been presented to council with the title Acquisition of Historic Asset. I think it's time that council uh, shares with the community exactly what that um, historic asset is and that will allow the decision makers of this council uh, to have conversations, open conversations with our community um, ab about this particular asset. Uh, I note uh, that uh, there has been um, a lot of activity on social media over the last um, 24 to 48 hours uh, in respect to this line item, acquisition of historic asset. Uh, and I think um, um, m moving forward with um, any discussions that we have at a briefing, uh, we will be all the richer as councillors uh, if we can have open and transparent conversations with our community about this particular um, matter. Okay, I'll speak against the motion. I don't. I think that would prejudice any future council decision, uh, and I don't think it's in council's best interest to do that. I do believe in briefings. We're going to discuss other things that might lead to other forms of um, uh, getting feedback. But I uh, certainly do not agree with prejudicing the possible uh, way forward with this project. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak uh, for the uh, motion or against the motion? Does the mover wish to sum up? Thanks very much, Mr Mayor. I think it's imperative that um, uh, we uh, uh, resolve tonight uh, to um, uh, finally and formally uh, put a name to the historic asset so that we can have a mature conversation with the constituents that put us here. As I said, there's a lot of activity speculating uh, as to what this item is across social media and has for uh, some time, but um, given that it's on the agenda, I see it's ramped up uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, and I think it would be a, a, um, a gesture uh, to our community to allow the nine elected rep representatives here to have um, um, you know, robust discussions with our community about this particular item, uh, and we can only do that if um, uh, we uh, put a name to what the historic asset is. Okay, so then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Um, all those against? Against. Um, uh, seven two. If I can call for a division. Okay, C6, application for permanent road closure, road adjacent to lot 206 on WV1262. I have a conflict. Right. Okay, Councillor Guthrie's left the room. Do we have a mover? Sure. Councillor Ladbrook. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to move that. Um, Council declined the application for permanent road closure for the road adjacent to lot 206 on WV1262 as this would restrict asset to the, um, access to the surrounding properties. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Hancock, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. All, that, all those against? Okay, so that is 6 2, if I can call yes. for a division.
Correct. Uh, uh, Councillor Burkett. C7, oh, we're just waiting for uh, Councillor. I'll make sure she can get back in. Yeah, it might be locked in outside. We had a we'll just adjourn for no, we're coming. Yep. Uh, uh, C7, disposal of land, Denton Court in June. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council include in the contract of sale of lots 8, 9, 11 and lots 13 to 29 on SB 297126 uh, as a special condition that the purchaser must construct a compliant dwelling on the land within... So three years is what... Of three yeah, years of the, the purchase contract um, completing and that council has the right to buy back the land at the same purchase price paid by the sex su successful tenderer, less council's legal cost, duty and registration fees to reacquire the property to council for the land if construction is not completed within this time frame, as well as any related special conditions recommended by council's lawyers to protect council's interests. Okay, do we have a seconder? Yeah, uh, Councillor Ladbrook, um, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Uh, only to say, Mr Mayor, that um, uh, it would be remiss of me, again, not to um, uh, reference uh, former Councillor Denton uh, on this particular project, who uh, had advocated from uh, the moment I joined her uh, in this chamber uh, for uh, an increase to uh, land for uh, the purpose of uh, growing the community of Injun. Um, uh, this is what this land is intended to do. Uh, and I think it's important to have a condition in place on the purchase uh, of uh, what, um, in my opinion, is very affordable land um, to ensure that there are uh, new dwellings uh, that are built on this land and we continue to grow um, not only in June but the broader Maranoa as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Nine zero. Uh, APLNG livability grants round one 2022-23. Council McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'd like to <coughs> move that Council one endorse the recommendations of the asset assessment panel by approving the following applications for payment. PCYC Marina movable fans, $3,600. Roma Polo Cross, Polo Cross Club, new playground, $6,975.86. In June Kindergarten Association, foundation refurbishment, $12,000. Bendemere Pony Club, turn on the lights, $13,793. Roma and District Cricket Association, mower upgrade, $17,600. Roma Bush Gardens, Amphitheatre Development, $20,000. Surratt and District Development Association, Surratt Multipurpose Courts Equipment, $24,016. Noonga Community Association, Ablution Block, block Installation, $25,000. That's for a total of $122,984.86 to Right to the unsuccessful applicants providing feedback. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook, any opposition? Does anyone wish to um, uh, speak or did you have a question? Or? No, opposition. Right, okay. Uh, then does the move wish to speak to the no, motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd just um, like to congratulate on all the applicants. Uh, we had uh, too many for this round, but I'm encouraging anyone that gets the e get once they get their letters back to reapply the, again, and uh, for the next round sometime in the new year. Okay. Does someone uh, wish to speak against the motion, Councillor Hancock? Yep. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
Uh, whilst I'm excited for the, uh, the groups that have um, been successful in their applications, um, I am disappointed for the groups that have missed out. Um, this has been very much oversubscribed, as was expected, and, um, and the reason I'm voting against this is not because I don't support each and every one of these groups that are being put forward by the assessment panel. I do. I think they're all very worthy applications. Um, what I'm against is I actually believe that the um, total $500,000 should have been released to the community. Um, and so therefore, more of the um, applications could have been uh, approved and that money would be out in our community immediately, um, making positive effects to our community rather than having to wait now for a, uh, a second round of grant money. And so it's on that basis that I don't support um, the recommendation today. Okay, do I send someone wish to speak for the motion? I'll speak for the motion. I think um, having two grants rounds a year is actually fairer because it gives more people that haven't heard about it the opportunity to be involved in the next grant round. Generally, they'll be um, uh, oversubscribed, but I think it takes a fair while for news to get around, so I like the fact rather than one pot and it's done for the year, that two pots I think is better. Um, so I'll certainly be supporting this motion. Um, does anyone wish to speak against the motion or for the motion? Or does the mover wish to sum up? Oh, Mr. I just, I've listened to what everyone said, but uh, these, the criteria, I suppose, uh, were set about, you know, are not only just from council, but discussions with other uh, bodies that are involved in this um, uh, assist in this um, grant, uh, grants. You can name them. Well, APLNG livability grants. So we we had to we worked with the other with, with the other um, with the APLNG people as well. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. All those against? Eight one. If I can call for a division. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mayor, I have conflicts for the next two. Yeah, he's got to. Okay. So we're just. I'm just getting some information. So I move that we deal with uh, C nine and C ten later in the meeting, uh, as I'm um, requesting some information with a motion. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay, nine zero. So we're moving on to C um, eleven. <clears throat> uh, request to commence legal proceedings against customer for unpaid natural gas debt. Debt. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council approve the commencement of legal proceedings to recover the outstanding debt owed as outlined in the report. Do we have a seconder? Councillor McMullen. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay, 9-0. Uh, then we're moving on to C12, development infrastructure charges. I move that this lay on the table till uh, we receive a report back in regards to infrastructure charges. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Nine zero. Okay, the next one is uh, C13, request to purchase land on lot 124 on EG 247 Surat. Councillor Hancock. I move that this... That's not what I'm moving. Okay, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just wait a second. Sorry, yeah. Kel, are you right? Are you right? Yeah, thank yeah, you. C thirteen. Yeah. Uh, I move that Council One note the officer's report as presented to advocate for and work with the applicant to facilitate the application process. We have a second to Council McMullen. Uh, uh, do I have to say? Do you think I should be saying um, the application process, uh, like who, who, who we, you know, who who we have to apply to? Well. 
Department of Resources. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, think, I think I need yeah. to add. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, this it makes is, sense. This will go back. Um, sorry. Um, so if I can just add that. Number two, advocate for and work with the applicant to facilitate the application process through the Department of Natural Resources. Right. Is the second happy with that? Yeah. Right. Oh, no one wants to speak. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, C fourteen two three six. And the, oh sorry, the, the, that was nine zero, was it? Nine zero. Yep. Two three six Edward Street North. Roma, I'd like to move that one we receive and note the report authorise the CEO to approach a local property agent to seek their advice on what work is required to make this property rentable. Um, and uh, we'll have a seconder. I just wonder, Mayor, should you have in there a point three, which is an um, I don't know how to do this without a bug, but authorise the CEO to progress it because we're not yep. back here until yep. December, uh, until January, and, that, and if this can be out in the market, it should yep. be. Yeah, I agree. So I'm happy to have that. Authorise the CEO to progress mm -hmm. the matter uh, to rent the property, uh, if if suitable, to rent the property if suitable. Do you think we could be notified by email yep. um, of the CEO's yep. findings? Progress. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if suitable, uh, with councillors notified by email, uh, an update. Okay. So we could just, for um, completeness, could we delegate uh, the, th the authority to the CEO to progress uh, subject to feedback from councillors like it still will be the CEO's decision because we'll delegate that today mm -hmm. but you may want some feedback from from us I don't know mm. yeah sure. well, I think what we got there is enough I think yeah, but what, be but, um, the CEO is just going to email us but we won't be providing anything back to her what is that no that's what the resolution says just to just to let us know what decision that's right whereas if it said will delegate the authority to do Edwina, so she'll make the decision, but she seeks informal feedback from councillors. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, but no, we don't make decisions. We don't, no, we don't. Sorry, uh, we don't do that with anything else. I, so I, I think the CEO, speak. if it's not suitable, will not be progressing. Yeah, right. If it comes that's back, right. it is a million yeah. dollars. Um, so you just haven't put any budget around it. No, yes. that's right. But the CEO has mm. control of the building, so they will... Um, Okay, so I would like to move, one, receive a note of the report, two, authorise the CEO to approach a local property agent to seek their advice on what works are required to make the property rentable, three, authorise the CEO to progress the matter to rent the property, if suitable, with councillors notified and update by email. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Again, we'll go to... I'm opposition, it's not. Right, and we'll go to the vote. Uh, no one wants to speak. We'll go to the no. vote. Oh. Do you do you wish to speak? Well, I, yeah, I do. Right, I please go. I, ahead. I, I won't be agreeing with this. I don't agree with this, Mr. Mayor. I don't believe we should be spending any money on that house. Take the offer we get, we got and go with it because by the time we spend money on this house, I don't believe it's going to improve the value of the house, and I'll be very surprised if um, unless we spend big money, we're going to get many people to rent it. Many people. Okay, I'll speak to the motion. The decision to keep the house has already been made uh, at a previous council meeting and I believe this is an investigation only if it doesn't work out, if your uh, thoughts are uh, correct. But if it is and it can get a house to the, even though it's a basic house in basic condition, if it can be, it's one more house that is um, in the market and council can make a decision in the future what it wants to do with the house. So on that note, if no one else is wished... That, is that right, though? We didn't have that... We um, rejected the we offers. Rejected we the didn't offer. move we didn't. a resolution to keep the house. Oh, no, we actually had a resolution... Well, well, we had a, a resolution not to take an offer. Take the offer, but that yeah. wasn't a resolution. And then we the went house. to investigate how That's much right. it was going yeah. to cost. So this is getting private enterprise to tell us. OK, so on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. All those against? Against. Okay, five, four. 
five four, I think it is, if I'm called for division. Okay. Um, C. What are we up to? Two ninety two. Two ninety two. C fifteen. Bring your action group incorporated contract. Do we have a mover, Councillor Burkett? I'd like to move that Council One receive and note the correspondence received from the Bringer Action Group Incorporated to continue funding the Bottle Tree Bulletin on a month to month basis under the current terms and conditions. Three, be provided with the report about procurement options in early 2023. We have a second to Councillor McMullen. Uh, an amendment. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, I'd like to move uh, an amendment that is point one, two, and three, and add point four be provided with the report regarding the inclusion of council news in the Bold Tree Bulletin. So does the move... At a future meeting. The so that's just a report to come just back. Just a report to come back. So it can and be then be worked on. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Should it come by? Okay. Yeah. Is the second yeah. happy yeah. with yeah. that? Yeah. Well, that is the motion then. Okay. Now, does anyone wish to speak to it? If not, we're going to the vote. I'll just... Mm. Can I just suggest... Um, I don't know if it's another amendment, but that... It comes via a full briefing because we've got the luxury, um, the three of us having been here when we did this last time, yeah. but others haven't, to be taken through the whole, you know, concept of the bottle tree bulletin, and it might might be um, uh, easier to do that at a briefing, to then come back to a council meeting. Right. So, Councillor Burkett, are you happy to have in that four hold yeah. a briefing? Yeah, regarding the inclusion of that and other matters? The report regarding the inclusion of council news. What did I say? Council well, news. it's up there. Hold a briefing regarding the inclusion of council news uh, with a report. We're holding a briefing with That's a report. holding a briefing no. on the entire thing. No. Right. Not just on including Including council, council news. With the inclusion. It's, it's, um, it's more than that, but... Okay, mover and a second are happy with yeah. that? Righto. Really? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay, 9 0. Okay, moving on. C16. Uh, Infra. Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, Sorry, one. I'm jumping in. Three. You're in a hurry. Yeah. Three, two, one. I got it. It was open. No, I C16 yeah, infrastructure email. agreement. An email on that, I think. Yeah, we? we did. Danielle sent us through there. Did you get that one, Kel? Did you? Yeah, I sent it through. Yes. Yeah, have you got it? <laughs> I'll move. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll move that Council proceed to assess the development application and finalise the infrastructure agreement in relation to the acquisition of proposed lot five and water and sewerage infrastructure required to service the subdivision. Two, proceed to negotiate the purchase of proposed lot four with the landowner separate to the development application infrastructure agreement. Three, share the property valuation for proposed lot four with the landowner. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a seconder, Councillor Ladbrook. Um, have we got that wording there, Kel? We well, haven't got it, there's no email. <laughs> It'll take a little bit of time. But that's fine, does everyone understand the motion? Yeah, we've got the email That's the one that, yeah, Danny, I'll send yeah. it before. Uh, does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. It was Council Ledbrook. Yep. Okay, moving on. That's 9-0. Okay. we go to the late. LC1 2023 Australia Day Awards. We have a mover. Oh, Councillor Hancock. I'll move that Council accept the recommendations from the awards assessment panel for the 2023 Australia Day Awards recipients for the Maranoa region. We have a seconder. Councillor Burkett. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Nine zero LC two minor. Yeah. Yeah. 
We have an actually. We have to you go want back to get to close. Back it's only if there's questions. Does anyone have any questions on LC2? Yes, I have lots. So we could do LC4 then. We've discussed it. that. We've got to change the... I move that we deal with LC4 it. next. Okay, do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Burkett, all those in favour of going to LC4? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're on the LC4. Uh, South West Rock Initiative, Outback Cars Proposal. I will move that. Well, we we'll put up there. That's it. That's, that's it. Council re one receive receive a note to report to decline the proposal due to our existing car hire businesses located at the Rama Airport. Okay, we have a second to Councillor O'Neill. Uh, any opposition? Anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, Mark, okay. Said, was you online? Okay. Um, sorry, I said yes. Yes, sorry, it must have chopped out. Okay, nine zero. Okay, so do we have someone to move into close? No, no, we've got two more, but we need not been in close for them. Yeah, we've got the others that we might. Well, we moved out of, we so moved only one. I don't no, no, we got. Item zero. We got this one here, Toy. We may as well do it. It's actually LC5. I move we deal with LC5 next. What's that one? Oh, it's about. Yeah, um, yeah right. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. You'll have to put that. LC5. What's it? Oh, I've, I've moved it. Moved it. I've moved that we is. move it. Move it into the. Into move move it to the next one. Yeah, that's what I just moved. Right, okay. Do we have a seconder? Second okay. Yeah. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay, eight zero. Righto. Uh, here we are. Uh, Brownie Hut must be LC five, maybe. Brownie and Guide Hut, forty one Arthur Street, Roma. Council uh, O'Neill. I'll move the council a acknowledge the successful gambling fund grant to the to the Roma Show Society. B consent to and approve the development building application for renovations to the Guide and Brownies Hut at 41 Arthur Street, Roma. C, waive development related <coughs> fees for Roma Show Society for the application to renovate the Brownie and um, Guide Huts at 41 Arthur Street, Roma. Uh, D, source the assistance from in-kind support major GL um, 2887.2248 in line with council's policy. E, assist with in-kind support in relation to the um, rectification of power issues at the site where possible. F acknowledge that this is existing council infrastructure. Okay, Councillor McMullen uh, seconds that. Uh, anyone wish to speak? Just We're to say, Mr Mayor, congratulations to the Roma Show Society for, for getting the grant first and foremost, uh, and secondly, for um, breathing life into a couple of very old buildings that have been used for a long time for different purposes, uh, but it's great that um, the Roma Show Society has been able to utilise it. Okay, anyone else wish to speak? Uh, I too would like to congratulate them. Uh, if we, we're actually easy to get along with and hopefully this motion makes it easy to get along with. Uh, what it's a wonderful thing when the community help restore council's assets and we should be, um, any way we can be helpful, we should, I believe. Okay, so on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're going to go back to close now. I move that we go into close. Yeah, we have a seconder. Councillor McMullen, all those in favour? Yes. Yes. He, he, he was that eight? Was it was that eight? Eight zero. He wasn't eight zero. Yeah. LC2, Minor Organisational Structure Amendments. I'd like to, one, uh, oh, no, I'll start again. That Council, one, acknowledge resolution OM slash 03.2021.01, endorsing the new organisational structure for adoption from the 1st of September 2021. 
to endorse the minor amendments to the organisational structure as recommended by the office in the officer's report. Three, include the additional specialist positions as presented. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Guthrie, any option? Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion or against the motion? Please go ahead, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, I won't be supporting uh, the motion tonight um, uh, because I don't believe in the addition uh, of uh, uh, the level in which uh, a specialist position will be entering the organisation. Uh, I think this will cause further unrest in the community in terms of being top heavy, uh, and therefore I just simply cannot support the, um, uh, the resolution as it stands. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak for the motion? I'll speak for the motion. I do support the motion. As usual, the scuttlebug and so forth normally doesn't have any real substance and this won't have anything. I don't believe it's in a title. Uh, in fact, I think it's exciting for the organisation um, for people to think this way. So I certainly will be supporting it. Does anyone wish uh, to speak against the motion? Councillor Hancock. Um, I'm not sure what the word scuttlebug meant, but um, I won't be supporting this with um, a... I don't endorse the new organisational structure. I vote against that. And secondly, I have um, concerns with the... Um, title of a new position um, that has been presented to us. Um, don't have a problem with the position itself. I've just got concerns around um, around uh, the title of the position um, that we, we discussed in close. Okay, does anyone wish to speak for the motion, against the motion? Then we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. All those against? Yes. 6-3 if I can call for a division. Okay, moving on to... LC3. 21, is it? 31. 31, thank you. Should be easy to find. LC3, submission to the Department of CHDE, divestment of housing stock January... 2023. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move that Council approve the submission to the Department of CHDE. As presented? As presented. Right. Do we have a seconder? Councillor McMullen. Any opposition? Um, no. No. Right. Okay. Does anyone... We'll just wait for Councillor Burkett doing the right thing with the door. Um, okay, so does anyone wish to speak for or against? Councillor O'Neill. Uh, just very briefly, I think this is a step uh, in the right direction. Uh, I think, uh, well, I, I really hope the department sees the value in what we're putting to them. Um, I, I've said this previously in the chamber. I think this is one, a very good example of where council has come together uh, and collectively worked uh, on coming up with <coughs> a solution. Uh, and uh, I will be very pleased uh, if we get the green light from the department uh, and uh, we see this project rolled out in our community. Uh, it's difficult to speak in, in, uh, in riddles when we can't share exactly what it is just yet, uh, but rest assured, um, I'm, I'm confident Council will all support this today uh, and uh, if, uh, if we do get um, the support of the, of the government, then it will be a good outcome for our community. Uh, I too will be supporting this. Um, this has been a legacy issue that has been uh, hanging around Council and I'd like to thank uh, the interim CEO for actually putting so much effort into working with everyone and obviously getting feedback from Council. So I'd like to thank the interim CEO to actually get to the end of this journey uh, and hopefully um, things have progressed and the uh, state can see the benefit of this and the benefit to the community of the Maranoa. Does anyone else wish to speak? Does anyone wish to sum up? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 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 Okay, 9-0. How many have we missed, Kel? Nine and ten. Nine and seeds, can Yes, the... Um Extension, the race extension. Oh, that's right. We did yes, leave. Yes, later though. Oh, that's right. We did. We went on. 
Okay, now is this scene nine? Are you can go home. Can I go home? Uh-huh. Yeah, not really. Yeah, there's, there's only two more left, isn't there? That's yeah. it. So you've got yeah. a conflict on these two? Oh, two. Well, that's not fair. Not that that was meant to be. Thank you. do that with me. I thought we were going to lay these on the table. Oh, the I've, got, I've got some wording here. He just wanted to get the wording up at his... I thought it was because the officers were away. Yeah. And because of the detail. Sorry, what, 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 what are we... It was from? just to the deferrals, the extensions that... Yeah, which is which is why, why I'm doing it. Are you moving it then? Or? Yeah, I'm just waiting just for... Just say Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry no. Christmas Merry to Christmas. you too, Merry Councillor Guthrie. Well, she's got a... Con- uh, council's got a conflict, so we're just waiting for the council to leave the room. Okay, so we're up to C9. Uh, request for additional concession on uh, rates for loss of capping, 15020357. I would like to move that council resolve pursuant to S uh, to uh, S1201, 121B, 1225 and 1229 of the Local Government Regulation 2012 to grant the landowner a concession by the way of agreeing to defer the rates under the 28th of February 2023, payment of the cover, uh, current rates and charges for the property. Um, well, it's going to come back. Uh, do we need to put anything about it coming back to Council? Or? Um, it, through the chair, um, yes, you could. You could um, that a further report be brought. Yeah, back and to a further re- uh, uh, this matter come back to a further meeting of council. Uh, okay, do we have a seconder, Councillor Burke? And any opposition? Is any future can, can future I, future meeting of council? Can I just ask a question? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, what exactly are you trying to do here? Uh, this just extends the discount period. And we're going to deal with it next uh, meeting when our office is back, hopefully. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we've got a second. Uh, anyone wish to? It was Councillor Burkett. Uh, anyone wish to um, speak? We're going to vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Eight zero. Okay, moving on to C ten. C ten request for additional concession on rates for loss of capping one five zero two zero five four eight. And we're just waiting for that to come up. I'd like to move the council resolve pursuant to S one two zero one one two one B one two two. Three one two two five and one two two nine of the local government regulation, two thousand and twelve, to grant the landowner a concession by way of agreeing to, to defer until the twenty eighth of February, twenty twenty three, payment of the current rates and charges for the property, and the matter um, be deferred to the next council meeting. For uh, to a the matter come back to a future meeting of council. Okay, uh, we have a seconder, uh, Councillor Ladbrook. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, that is uh, eight zero, and I would. Um, no, we missed. No further business, uh, Kel. Uh, Councillors, I'd just like to take this opportunity to wish everyone Merry Christmas and a safe and happy New Year. I'd also like to wish the public listening to the video um, the very best for the festive season and may it be a happy and peaceful time. And on that note, I'll close the meeting at 8.10pm. Thank you for your attendance, Councillors.